bar, dude! And I am with Mauler and the drinker Getting trashed with the web screen dictures A cheap night cause I'm feeling kinda thrifty Got a ten pack of beers and a bottle of whiskey Hop up the cork, have a glass of wine hey. I feel safe, no, I'll be fine Trouble walking in a straight line But for the Apino Noir It's open bar With our hosts, Mauler and the critical drinker Thank you, thank you very much, and hello everybody, and happy new year to all of you. This is like the first open bar stream of 2022, um, and what a lovely year it's turned out to be so far. <laughs> On this day, January 6th, when nothing of any particular significance has happened before, uh, I am joining you today, so um, let's kick things off. I am joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, the long man himself, Mahler. Hello, sir. Hey, hello. January, oh. yeah. we, this is the first time we can make January 6th a sort of event where stuff happens. It'll be great. Yeah. It's gonna be this, awesome. is, this is what people will remember. On January yeah, 6th, yeah. the drinker hosted his open bar stream. <laughs> they talked about lovely. all kinds of media. <laughs> it's going to be so good. But yeah, good was, to see you, man. You yeah, you too, mate. Um, yeah, it's, it feels like, I don't know why, it really feels like a long time since we've done another, one of these, and I don't know why. It's just yeah, that, that weird psychological barrier of getting into a new year. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, been a whole fucking year since I've seen you. So, it uh, has. Man, I've, I've missed you, man. Thanks I for coming back. You. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we drink talking. But... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even drunk enough yet for this kind of emotional <laughs> outpouring. A lot of water, okay? I'm very drunk. <laughs> yeah. And we've got, uh, as... Um, as has become like a famous guest on this show. As hello, my friends. How you doing? Mm. Excellent. I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm much better for seeing thing. your lovely face. As oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I'm really... just, uh, f I did a couple of videos today on my own channel, and I looked at the time, and it was uh, just before eight o'clock. I was like, right, I'm just gonna literally sit back in my chair and rock away to sleep. Get a quick a quick cat nap in. And then I woke. I had I had dreams, man. <laughs> I had dreams. Do you want to describe them to us? I, I, I the, like, or you know, when you wake up and they're so vivid, and yet they're already fading so quick. But yeah, yeah. I just I had dreams, man. And yeah. then I I looked at the time and it was eight fifty six, and I was like, like <laughs> so, uh, yeah. If if I suddenly uh, vanish into another dimension. Uh, that'll be why. Well, it definitely wasn't obvious when we were talking backstage and you were semi comatose. I ne <laughs> never would have guessed that you'd just woken up. Well, you wake up, I've got this uh, filming light there, and then the, the lights from the screen, and then the regular lights up there. So when I woke up, I was just like, my eyes just couldn't <laughs> handle the lights. It's like ah, Quasimodo. Ah. I mean, it's, it's good that you did wake up, though. So, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Um, it doesn't matter how you get here, as long as you get here in the end, hmm. that's fine, man. I'll have uh, you know, Quasimodo is very handsome, uh, respectable, and he's a hero, all right? I won't have him besmirched. I tell Wait. you, man, ever, ever since season one of The Witcher, I've had a bit of a thing for hunchbacks. Um, so... <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Definitely the Scott in me. <laughs> There's a lot of hunchbacks in my neck yeah. of the woods. Decades of inbreeding, you see. <laughs> That's why you can tell that someone's from the, the outside because their face is symmetrical. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, man. Like uh, just gone through Event Horizon here. Oh, oh Jesus. Well, that's that, that, that can be fun at the same time, you know? The things yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, as because. I believe you, you have seen season two of The Witcher. <gasps> I uh, have. I, I remembered you ranting about it on on Twitter. I did. <laughs> uh, I I was not a massive fan of the first one. Uh, again, again, I thought Cavill was great, uh, but I thought the the focus on on um, 
uh, Yennefer was just obnoxious. Uh, it was just it was just way too much. And uh, this season, I I was <sighs> pulling my hair out. Go on, laugh. Uh, I was I was literally pulling my hair out because. Like Cavill is great again. It's like he's born to do these roles. Um, yeah. And yeah, yep. this this season just focused on every character but him. Um, it was frustrating as fuck. So it, was, it was so annoying that if you weren't, you know, if you if even if he was there and if it wasn't overdoing it with Siri, then it was back with Yennefer again. Yay! Uh, and then we're off with Fringilla. Who gives a shit about Fringilla anyway? You're is off with Fringillo, and then it was off with Elven Wench, and this is like, oh, just and every time it went back to Cavill, it was really good. Yeah, and he's yeah. on the roll, and he's just like, oh man, this this series is just uh, it's driving me nuts. I I don't know if they had some kind of mandate that like Jennifer had to get an equal amount of screen time as Geralt. Because that's what it felt like. Because a lot of the stuff that she ended up doing was just busy work, just to give her something to do. You know, and she's she's mm. come back to the Council of Mages. Oh, she's with um, you know, she's with Fringilla, and then she's been captured by the elves, and now she's gone to the mages. Now she's on the run with like random Nilf Guardian guy. You know, it's just all stuff for her to do, and it's such an implausible series of events. And now she's with Yaskier, who's the most annoying prick that I've ever seen on any TV show ever. Maybe he, he burn in fire for eternity. Um, oh, man. But the, the frustrating element was uh, that uh, I've completely lost my train of thought here. Said, yeah. <laughs> you said, yeah, I was ready to say something, and then he said, Yaski, and, and my brain just died because he just yeah. speaks like a 21st century wanker. He really uh, fucking does, honestly. And, and it's, it's like so out of place whenever he's on screen because everyone's just like, "Come, we must go do the thing." And he's like, "All right then, Governor, how is it going? Oh, I tell you what, hey, yeah, you're buying the first. All right." <laughs> there, there's a I bit. Say, oh, there's a bit right to, to put this into some context for you, Mauer. There's a bit where um, they are trying to bluff their way on board a ship, like Yaskier, who's like a. Um, well, he's a friend of Geralt's anyway in the show um, and a oh. bunch of refugees they need to get on and in order to get on the ship he needs to just like bluff his way on board um, so he's going on um, the, the dock worker who's there to like check your papers and stuff he recognizes him as this famous singer um, and he, he makes some offhand comment about like a song that Yaskier had done the previous season um, and how it was really confusing because it's got like multiple timelines in it and it's a little reference to the fact that season one was really convoluted in its narrative um, and so Yaskier is walking away from him and he does this it's so fucking annoying exactly like what Az says he talks like a 21st century guy because he's walking away and he's like Am I going to say it? You know what? Yes, I am. And then he just turns around at the guy and he's like, you're a fucking boneheaded fucking simpleton who doesn't understand good storytelling if it bit him in the arse. And it just, mm. it blows their cover. It gets everything fucked up. And it's just because of this guy being a prick. And all he is wow. is just like a little, um, you know, a little vector for the writers who, who are pissed off that people didn't embrace season one for being too fucking ridiculously complex and and hard to understand um, and it's just them having a rant at the audience for being stupid in their minds uh, uh, and that's that's what Yaskier basically the, is yeah I think I stuck a tweet out at the time just going there's, there's even a bit where the, the, the writers have a shout at the audience and I was just like Jesus their, their skin is so thin it is yeah. so thin to put that sort of meta uh and it was so blatantly obvious as well. It wasn't as if it was... It's like Matrix bloody... Yeah. Up your, whatever the new one was called. Uh, obvious. Uh, and it just it was just embarrassing. I found it embarrassing. Um, yeah. You get all kinds of different meta lines and different meta projects sometimes. Because oh, like, the Matrix Resurrection is one of the best for just being cringe as fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Don't worry. I saw your face. Ooh. I was like, oh, shit. I may have used language wrong. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Matrix yeah. is the best. But there are Whoa. there are instances there have been where writers apologize through their work 
um, or like appreciate the audience or whatever in terms of like just with meta lines. I'm just like, man, I wonder if we'll ever get that again. See, uh, it, it's you know that scene could have been interpreted as like, oh yeah, the show's having a bit of a laugh at itself. Like, you know, didn't we get a bit um, pretentious with season one? But the way they framed it is like having the, the dumbest motherfucker on the planet like be the one to bring it up. You know, that everything, you know, he's he's just like this big, like, oaf of a man. He's like, oh, yeah, I didn't understand it. You know, and that, that's, I guess, their opinion that's of... That's you. That's you, everyone. Yeah. That's how they see you. He's a big, stupid, dumb person. I was like, that's typical Hollywood. Thank you. Yeah, it's like, remember we're better than you mm-hmm. you know that, that's basically their mindset um so yeah stuff like that was just annoying about the witcher and yeah the, the fact that they focus on everyone apart from Geralt, who's literally the best thing in that show um god damn like someone get henry cavill a new agent because <laughs> they are not serving him well this no. this guy should be in basically every movie and he's just he's just getting shot on i remember what i was gonna say Say, I was it. say, remember when they were filming, there were the rumors coming out that uh, Mr. Cavill was not happy on set. Uh, and then they dropped a couple of, there was another, you know, a couple of rumors saying that he was difficult to work with. Oh. And, and some people were trying to bury him. And I, and I said it, I distinctly remember saying, um, it's probably, you know, after seeing season one, it's probably because they're doing him a disservice and he's getting pissed off and, uh, he was interviewed or something, and he sort of warned everyone. Somebody's like, you know, oh, how's The Witcher 2 go, you know, filming going or whatever, or now that it's done, how do you feel about it, you know, waiting for it to come up? And he, he said something along the lines of, well, you know, when I'm in it, uh, <laughs> you know, in, 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 intimating that he didn't exactly have much uh, uh, screen time again, sort of dropping that hint. And then as soon as the second season dropped, uh, when he was interviewed about the second season, he said um, uh, that he hopes that season three sticks a bit more closely to the uh, books. Yeah. You know, what you just uh, said, by the way, reminds me of when they were like, Mark Hamill, what was it like to work with this whole cast about TLJ? And he was like, um, yeah, maybe I didn't work with them. <laughs> yeah, was he not like yeah, you 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 know, um, Oscar and and um, yeah, you know whoever else, and he's like, you all seem like really nice people. I hope to work with you one day. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> the thing is, like Henry Cavill's the biggest star in this in this show as well. He yep. should have the pulling power to say, nah, I'm I'm in. You know, I oh, should be front and center. You assholes, or I'm walking. Did you guys see uh, Mission Impossible Fallout? As I think you said, you haven't seen it yet, right? I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. We'll. That'll be a thing we'll probably watch together. So Fuck I yeah, can... I'll watch that with you. But um, I was just going to say that made great use of Henry Cavill. It was a really nice surprise, uh, him being in that film, and he was awesome in yep. it. And yeah, what a shame that like, you know, that's just like he's casually a, a a character. I'll just say in in a Mission Impossible film, there he is, and you're like, oh, that's hmm. fun. It's like, oh yeah, you know, he's he's Geralt, but that there's not really much point in mentioning that. Um, oh yeah, he's Superman, but you know, well, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck's happening? How does he have those roles? And he's got uh, Napoleon uh, Solo from the Man from Uncle as well. He was great well. in that. He was suave as fuck. You know, charming, sophisticated looking, <sighs> can handle himself in a fight. Just ideal. He's a way. He's a, it's crazy. Any other era, he would be just such a massive. I mean, he's not not that he's not massive, but. Uh, well utilized massive star and um it, it's it, uh, it just frustrates the shit out of me because the um it's not not too much to jump ahead but when uh when roach dies uh the uh the showrunner lauren histrich wanted that moment to be uh broken by humor oh you're fucking and, kidding me no and and yeah. henry and henry was just like no and then um, he got into it with her, and and then she said, um, there's, "There's actual quotes to this as well from her." And she was just like, "She said, Henry, y- you know the source material so well, you know the book so well. I'm just going to trust you to um, to come up with something." And then the next day, he came back on set with something, and then we had that wonderful moment because that's one of the best moments in the whole series. Is is 
when Roach dies. I was um, going to say, yeah, that that was probably the standard emotional scene, and it's hmm. not even with a human; it's a yeah, fucking it's a horse getting killed. <laughs> but it's just really nicely played. Like it's just, yeah, it's it's a great scene. And like you say, imagine if they dropped in a fucking joke in that moment. That that's uh, that Shang Chi levels of bullshit right there. Yeah, it's just not letting something sit, and 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 I mean, this is Marvel. Marvel never lets anything sit anymore. So they, they always well, we, put some stupid reference or line in. We were all surprised that they let a couple things sit in No Way Home. It was like, whoa. That's, uh, you know, like the so um, it dies and then some fucking <laughs> like, pop goes the weasel in the background. Like, woo! Little cloud on a, <laughs> on a tricycle yeah. right by. There are people who are like, well, we don't want everyone to be too sad. We better make a joke. The, this is, is the thing. Like, really well. Because I, I think you know, a little a, a bit of humor can can introduce it can balance out tragedy. Because like if you wallow too much in a, a yeah. tragic moment, then it can it can become too oppressive. It can become too heavy, and a well placed you know bit of humor can can just you know almost elevate it and and uh, make it all the more poignant. Because people often do use humor to cover up you know tragic moments. But if you get it wrong and you just start shoving jokes in it at the wrong time, then it's it's absolutely disastrous, and that's what that would have been in that moment. So damn, I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't do it. Um, but yeah, Henry Cavill seems like the kind of guy who would have read all the books and played and completed all the games on the hardest fucking difficulty, and just would know it back to front. Um, so yeah, I would I would probably always defer to him when it comes to stuff like this. They should listen to him a lot more. Um, I, I don't know if you picked up on this as well, as but like one of the big issues I still have with this show is I don't fucking know where anything is. You know, when they, they talk about this, cities like Sintra or Redania yeah, yeah. and places like that, I don't know where they fucking sit in relation to each other. I don't understand the geography of this yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. It's never shown in a larger scale. It's never put into context. It's just a bunch of places. They could be fucking anywhere. Mm. Um, and... You know, you, you when you see inside like one fucking generic castle, you've seen inside all of them. I don't know where anything is. Nothing stands out. They made the fucking genius decision to basically have every race be um, like Nilf Guardians, for example. They are black, they are white, they are Asian, they are everything. So there's no like way of just picking out like where you are, it, just even by looking at the people. Now, I know it's <laughs> there, there's kind of an explanation for this that like, um, this this entire world was created um, by like you know the merging of of various other worlds and sure. humans just kind of all got dumped in there. But people kind of segregate over time like that. That especially medieval people they would not all just live together in harmony like this. And the result is I I never know where the fuck I am when I'm seeing places. Like what's mm -hmm. your typical Nilf guardian? Like you don't know because they could be black, they could be white, they could be anything. It, yeah, and it's. It, I mean, this season had. Um, I mean, what they did with Nilfgaard as well is they, they got rid of the penis suits. Uh, and, and they <laughs> yeah, that was put, a good. That was a good move. But they put so they put them in suits of armor. So now Nilfgaard looks completely different again. Yeah. Uh, from season one, and and uh, you're absolutely spot on with the geography because uh, you got Geralt who's going around on a. Sh you got some people going around on ships, and then you got other people being thrown around on portals. And so you, you don't... If I hadn't played the games, I wouldn't have known Kaer Morin from Sintra at some point because yeah. of the way it just it just jumped about. And then when they when they were on the ship and they were they they got to the the, play, the, the city and they're just like here we are. And I was like, is this Novigrad now? <laughs> I was like, I don't know where we are. I have no idea where here we are is. And and yeah. And, I, I was I was baffled about um, about what was where and and who was what and how separated people were meant to be or not be and uh, and then <laughs> when we got to the city and it's just this uh, this <laughs> cosmopolitan <laughs> I was just, I was literally <laughs> laughing I was like oh here's here's me here's me here's my black elf friends and. Uh, here's my, you know, my brown friends are over here. Oh, 
Have you met Dave? He's trying to, he's, you know, he's oriental. And it was, and it just made the whole uh, fantasy just, just bizarre and, and, and almost stupid because, you know, themes of racism and, and when I was talking about racism, I mean, you know, racism against elves uh, yeah. and stuff like that is, is so prevalent and prominent and, and monsters and people with uh, magical powers. You know, and and when you've got these melting pots of just all different races of colors and creeds walking around, it's just like a society couldn't exist with those prejudices when they're so multicultural because of how yeah. you put them. And, and so yep. it, I know you've done it because, oh, we want to have, you know, people of different colors represented. But this is where it goes a step beyond and it doesn't make sense. Um, because you've done this and it just looks stupid and out of place. It's it's, it's very much like the, I hate to refer, you know, people are going to go, oh, you keep saying this. But in the very, you know, almost the first scene of the first season of The Witcher, uh, after he's defeated the, the creature and he goes to the inn uh, and the girl takes him there and the girl's saying on the way, oh, you know, I could be so much more, you know, just because I'm a woman don't mean I can't do things. You know, I'm a, I've got a good mind and all this sort of stuff. And then he goes into the inn and there's the innkeeper. And then if you look around the inn, you've got black people, you know, they, 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 he treats, they treat women as, as equals. And he's, and that innkeeper's got to go to Geralt and go, don't like your sort here. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is egalitarian, multicultural fucking in there is. And you're trying to say to Henry Cow, don't like your sort. It just, it, it makes a mockery out of the whole situation. And so I, I, I've never re- been able to take this whole show seriously because of it, because the, the, uh, the writers are, are so desperate to, to have their inclusion and diversity. Uh, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. And, and, and it really and, and doesn't in this. Cases. And it just, it becomes distracting and it, it just, it, it makes scenes like this just become farcical. Um, and like I say, yeah, I get that like the the way that this world was formed is not like your typical world. Like the humans here are not native to this planet almost. They were all just kind of dumped there. But like they they wouldn't all just live together in in happy and glorious multicultural harmony. That's just not how humans work, especially primitive humans in, in yeah, this yeah, sort yeah. of level. Um, and they there's just primitive prejudices. That's just the thing. The prejudice against magic, the prejudice against mutants, the prejudice against monsters the prejudice against the next town uh, yeah. and and so when you have those 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 basic uh old you know old prejudices uh, uh you're gonna you're gonna have that segregation it's gonna automatically happen you're gonna have that imbalance of power between men and women uh because men are physically stronger in those days and therefore <gasps> that becomes- no as no you can't in say that days. I said it. <laughs> that, I said <laughs> Wait, as no, <laughs> no, as no, come back to us no! You, you just got yourself cancelled um, for the fifteenth time. Uh, so you, you, you wouldn't have a society that was egalitarian like this society appears to be. Uh, yeah. It, it would be a society that would be again male dominated. Uh, I, you know, I think it, you're gone. It, it is to some extent in that, like, if you look at the, the foot soldiers of all the various armies, it's always men that do it. You know, you get women in positions of power for sure, like particularly amongst the mages, because magic is not gender dependent. It doesn't matter about the size of your muscles. If you're a magician, it's all about like the, the power that you've got within you. That, well, that was fine. the point. Unless, makes... you, unless you have power, unless you have physical, like magical power, mutated power, that's the only way that you get that step up from them but everyone in power in this is female yes you've got the elf woman you've got fringilla you've got yennefer uh they're they're all in those uh the leader of the um i forget what they call it the circle business you know the one who keeps crying because yennefer yennefer's so amazing every time she sees her, she can't stop crying um she does my freaking bonts in as well considering how much of a like cold hard ass she was in season one. Now she, she's like turned into discovery season two. She just can't stop fucking crying every time she sees her. Yeah. Um, to put this just for you, Mauler, um, Yennefer kind of sacrificed herself at the end of the first season to stop like an invading army. 
and it was uh -huh. assumed that she died because she just disappears. And so the first like few episodes of season two, every fucking character is just moping around like, oh my God, Yennefer died. She was such a hero. We she was beautiful. She was brave. She was awesome. Like characters even tell that directly to her when she's just like berating them. Oh, uh, the Captain um, Marvel treatment, I see. Exactly, yeah, and like I kind of pointed out in my review, there's such a thing as like show don't tell. We we get that she was a hero and that she may have sacrificed herself to save others. That's self evident just by seeing what happens on screen. You don't have to literally tell us that she was brave for doing that. We understand. So it's just it, it's so redundant and it's so fucking patronizing. Like we literally have to be told what to think about this character, um, and it, it's. That's it's a weird of today, though. It's typical. It of is today, and it, it's a weird thing with characters like this. Whether it's like you said, Mo, or Captain Marvel, or whether it's Michael Burnham from Star Trek, um, or whoever else you want to pick, like this, they, they they're surrounded by people that are constantly telling them how awesome they are, and how brave they are, and how special they are, um, and it just feels so unnecessary. And every time it happens, it makes me hate the character a bit more because the, hmm. the writers have such a fucking hard on for them. Um, it's just really frustrating from a, like just a storytelling point of view. Yeah. I, that's, that's I, I wonder if Batwoman, it's, oh way. God, Batwoman does it all the time. Like it's a bit of insecurity from the writer. Maybe like, uh Oh, I might not have proven my character is X. I better have someone say it. It's like, ugh. do you think it's, it's, some element of like either they weren't showing enough attention when they were kids or they were maybe shown too much attention by their parents and like they they think that's just how real people act you know their parents like told like oh you've shot on the carpet oh that was amazing well done that's the best turd i've ever seen congratulations you're special oh. you know and if they grow up with that is that just what they expect from life they expect to be praised for everything that happens and everything they do and they just they have to reflect that in their writing that's how we introduce people, right? If we had someone new, brand new to like the, you know, everyone had met them today on this stream, and they're like, "Oh, hi, you know, oh, drinker, it's good to meet," you. and then I go, "Yeah, this is a drinker. He's uh, he's courageous, intelligent. He knows exactly what to do in any situation. We're all very proud of him. And there's nothing he can't do." Yeah, in in reality, you say, like, "This is drinker. He's a drunken, sleazy moron." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, honestly, we highlight it for fun, but you do miss out on the. There's, there's a chemistry that goes away when you have characters just be like, they are smart and intelligent and clever and good. You're like, yeah. okay. It, we, I yeah, real people. It, it's, it stems from an inability to write that because they don't know how to write that. If, if you look at the way that um, alleged heroes are portrayed now, uh, they're not heroes, they're villains. Uh, they tend to to have a, a, a villainous um, origin. Uh, they tend to be like envious of somebody uh, or want to prove that they're better than somebody or something. Uh, they uh, do villain. I mean, look, just look at Wanda for goodness sake. Wanda Vision is, uh, is mm. a prime example of filtering in. But in like in comics, in recent times in comics, like Ironheart's origin is uh this is meant to be a hero is her school teacher said that she could do anything and she was mad at a school teacher because she's black that she wasn't being repressed so she literally shouts at a school teacher to say tell me something i can't do and she's like fine uh you'll never be tony stark and she's like right i'm gonna be better than <laughs> tony stark it's like that's not a hero's fucking origin that's yeah. the origin of, of, of t the next super villain, yeah. Super villain for Tony like Stark. And it's it, and interesting it's in in Witcher, like because um, in season two, again for Mauler, like Yennefer loses her magic powers, so she's no longer able to do magic, which she's relied on most of her life, um, and it's given her most of her um, like it's basically always an out for her if she gets into a difficult situation. She's lost that, um, and. Uh, and her quest really is to try and regain it throughout the season. She's got to find a way to get it back. Um, and she says to, to more than one person, like, I want my power back. I deserve it. Deserve. Yeah, it's like, hmm. anytime someone says it. that they deserve something, it immediately oh. makes me think, no, you fucking don't, if, that, if that's your attitude. Yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Because you, I guess you almost want your heroes to be saying, like, you know, maybe my power isn't me. Maybe... Uh... 
maybe I um I'm more than that, and maybe that power is too much. You know, just stuff to to, to yeah, build up I instead of being like, yeah, or, give me back my power. Yeah. Or, or you know, <laughs> yeah, I want to, you know, I want to do good with it, or um, yeah. you know, I'm I've got to combat this big threat that's arisen. I need my power in order to do that because I'm I'm nothing without it. Um, it's that whole, um, I, I guess, like what Tony said to um, to Spider Man. There to Peter Parker. Sorry, like if you need that suit, like if you're not anything without it, then you don't deserve to wear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which um, was a great moment in in very poignant moment. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, it's part of. I think they did try to do that a bit in. Uh, yeah, remember, nothing without Thor, the suit. Well, then Thor had to earn Thor power in his movie, and Iron Man's whole point is that he needs to have that the suits in his control, not like the government's or any other particular individual, because it's. A matter of using the power correctly. Um, Steve, like the whole reason he was chosen was because it's it's his personality that giving the power to is important instead of just anybody. You know, a lot of these stories are about putting the power to the right person as opposed to the person who's like, I want power. It's like that's yeah, what we that's call that. a palpatine. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a yeah. that's like wanting power for power's sake. That's villainous shit right yeah, there. Uh, yeah, again, craving power is villainous stuff. A hero uh earns it or has it thrust upon them. Uh, a villain is the one who craves it and demands it. No, I will. I will. I'm not going to cut Jennifer slack here, but I will say that, like, I think what they're implying here is that she's actually quite a flawed character, and that she is not your typical hero, um, and that is something that she needs to try and work through. But I feel like there's never really a reckoning for that. She wants her power back, and then ultimately she gets it. Now she does. She does perform a selfless act near the finale or in the finale where she is willing to give up her life in order to to save the day um and i guess uh, maybe that's what they uh, were hinting at nah, <laughs> nah, nah. doesn't think so oh, oh no um yeah yeah right after she was betrayed everyone and take siri to the witch uh so that she can get her powers back uh yeah it, i, I guess this, none of that rings true though because yeah i i <laughs> If you're trying to say to us, Yennefer is is uh, a flawed character, you know, without her magic, we're seeing some flaws in her character. Stop having every fucking person she comes across telling her how amazing she is, whether they f are heroes or fucking villains in the story. Every single solitary person that came in contact with her or even didn't come in contact with her, but were talking about her, were validating her at every fucking moment. And it was just, it got so fucking obnoxious. Even at that moment where uh, bloody Henry Cavill and, and, and fucking uh, representative fucking ma uh, mage were talking about how much they fucking loved her. <laughs> I'm fucking, fucking love her. We both fucked her. And it was just, it was just, oh my God, this is... Is, is, is Lauren history? Does Lauren think she's Yennefer? Is she kind of like living vicariously through Yennefer and is just demanding of this attention and, and validation? It's not natural. It never comes across as natural. And and the the fact that Geralt and Yennefer are together in a series to me has made no sense because at no point has have they ever seemed to have chemistry with each other or deserve to be with each other. And most certainly not this season uh it, it's it's yeah i can't have any sympathy for a character that is constantly uh wowed on, on every single solitary moment uh that they're on the screen like even with the the, the novagrad the, the, the novagrad captain or whatever when he's with her and he's just like i oh, yeah, yeah. So, i didn't realize just such how much a, of amazing woman you actually are even though we're on different sides it's just like, oh, no, just go fuck yeah hell. <laughs> that that dude that dude was one of the most weirdly inconsistent characters i think i've seen in the show like he is all over the fucking place like one minute he's villainous one minute he's virtuous like the it, it's like whatever he needs to be in any particular scene that's what he is yeah um, he, and he, he, go, he the, goes back and you think oh okay this is now where he starts to because he's like had this turn from the vi like a villainous person, and now he's kind of like being more empathetic towards the elves, and uh, he's going to come back and he's going to see the treatment and see what's going on, and he's going to put a stop to it. And we're going to no, no, no. He goes back and he's just kind of like, all right, let's get me arm. It's like Jamie in fucking Game of Thrones season eight, yeah, where he, where he, where he fucks um, 
high tower. And then um, he's just like, oh, <laughs> Gigantor. Yeah, yeah, he's just like, sorry, darling, you, you, you're the worst fuck I've ever had. I'm actually going to go to King's Landing to fuck my sister again. You're that bad. Uh. By the way, I'm a bad guy again. And he's just like that when he got back to no, and it wasn't even Novigrad, it was C- uh, uh, Sintra. Sintra. He goes yeah. to Sintra, which I thought was Novigrad, but wasn't Novigrad because it was Sintra, because you don't know where the fuck you are in this fucking show. And then he was just back to being Mr. Bad Guy and then turning back in towards manipulating the owls. And it was just like, you've literally had an arc and now you're going back to the back to uh, start position again, a reset. Did, did you notice as well, the minute he starts getting a bit too big for his boots with like diverse female sorceress lady, like she just lays the fucking smack down on him. Um, yeah. She- I, I don't know how to describe this, but like she was somehow able to give a paralyzing agent to him and all of the guys that he was having a banquet with, right? And it kicked in to all of them at the exact same instant. It was like basically like a, a, a poison that had been put into their wine, um, and it paralyzed all the muscles in their body so that she could walk in and murder them at will because they were unable to, to move. Um, but I don't understand how that happened. Like, simultaneously with all of them because they were all drinking at different speeds and you know some people might have waited a bit or whatever um but it was just all for the convenience of that scene just to put her right back fucking in charge again um and that was just yeah that's that's the mindset of the show you can't have a guy get too big for his boots because he'll get he'll get put in his place pretty quickly and for for angela and an elf woman they were the two of the most boring characters that I've ever come across that I just didn't give a shit about them when they're on uh, on the screen. So it's just like you're just pulling time again uh, away from Cavill here. We could be having much more exciting Cavill stuff going on, but oh no, we're going to have two fucking diverse women talking about pregnancy and uh, how we're now soulmate lovers. What, what are you? It didn't even it didn't even make that clear. Well, the husband is the wife. Because the, all they did with them is just gender re- reverse. And so the the husband's the the wife, the the uh the doting wife and the and the, and the baby rocker and the nanny and the nurse and it's just like what is going on? Yeah, he literally says to her like tell me what to do. Like I'm, uh, I'm at your command, and it's like you, you, you were the, you were the king apparently, but then you stepped down and let her take over because you couldn't do it. Um, so you're a fucking useless pussy, basically. <laughs> uh, I didn't, my, I, like initially, I was interested in the elf lady, and I wanted to see where that went, but then it kind of just went nowhere. They're obviously setting up for the next season. Um, Fringilla just pisses me off because the actress has one facial expression that she uses in every single scene. Like was she it, never, it? yeah, she never moves her mouth. She never moves her face. Like even when she speaks, like her her lips don't seem to move. It's the most bizarre thing. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like a game cut scene where the character animation is frozen or something. <laughs> M- Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> don't My know face how to is tired. It. <laughs> you got damn right. And my um, face is tired. There, there's a good one here. Someone mentioned it. Um, talk about Arcane. Don't let us down. Uh, I'd love to talk about Arcane. I fucking love that show. I told yeah, you to watch uh, it more. Me and Why I haven't you watched it? Yet, okay? It's as his fault, too. Why are you bringing me into this, <laughs> you dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just finished Kingdom with Springy, so we're, we're doing. You're Arcane the co host. Um, so don't worry. I'm gonna watch it soon enough. Hopefully, I've if it's good. One episode. I've watched one episode. Oh shit! How was it? Ah. Um, I I enjoyed it, uh, but my brain can't get past. Really, is struggling to get past half shaven red hair, pink hair, blue hair. On, on I know that moon. that is not the best representation. To be fair, um, that is a bit annoying. But give it time. Trust the but drinker this, on this, this one. I will this not steer you I, wrong, yeah. as. I know, I know, I know. Um, um, but the first episode was enjoyable, and I found it kind of almost Final Fantasy in in nature. And I, there was, it was kind of really interesting that that I almost imagined the it was going to stop, and I was going to pick up my gamepad and start playing. 
It's got a, it's got a cut scene oh, you, feel about it. You mean mm. Boba Fett? That's what that is. <laughs> I haven't watched episode two, nor do episode I. Episode two is the most video game bullshit, man. We'll get there. It's okay. <laughs> we we I, I, basically, yeah. The the arcane conversation, I think, as far as we can go with that right now, is I recommend it. I think it's really good. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Give it a chance. Um, look past the shitty haircuts, and yeah. uh, you'll be all right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, gentlemen, let us discuss Boba Fett. <laughs> Ugh. I've watched both episodes now, and uh, it was content. That, <laughs> yeah, that's the best that way is, I, can de- yeah. I can describe it. It is fucking content. Just the simplest, wow. most basic bitch storytelling you can think of with some nice visuals. Get it out on the screen. It, it's the mic zero of, of fucking oh, entertainment. Wow. But that's what you got right there. I, it, it feels sterile. Like you're never gonna get anything spicy from this. It's so controlled. I hate nothing. It. Yeah. Th- th- like I'm not invested in a single character. There's no significance to anything. Don't care about it. I didn't care about it even when I went into it. Um, I just watched it so that I could talk about it tonight. Basically, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, the actor who plays. This, Boba Fett, God bless him. I'm sure he's a lovely chap in real life, but he's he's no he doesn't really have any charisma or much acting ability, and he's just like a, a 60 year old man with, he with is, a beard. Um, got he's, he's got desperately relying. He's desperately relying on the voice. The you know just the. I'm gonna go with man making my way through the universe. Yeah, he's he's really fucking dumb. He walks into ambushes. He trusts people that he absolutely shouldn't trust. He shows mercy when he really shouldn't. Um, his, his fucking assistant is like the one who does everything. Dude, She's the one who chases people down. She's the one who seems to make most of the decisions and like take him places and stuff. He's just like. He's like Joe Biden. He just gets helped around everywhere and just taken from place to place. Like that's that's all he's got. I've seen a lot of people say it, and I agree. I don't think this is Boba Fett. This is this no. is the guy. They're saying it. This is this is some other guy. Some Grandpa Fett. <laughs> Grandpa <laughs> Fett. <laughs> I don't know. It was it. it the, the problems start right off the bat when he's stuck in the Sarlacc. And and you think, wow, what clever thing is he going to do to get out of this? Because he's <laughs> yeah. a resourceful motherfucker. This guy's going to be smart. It's going to be a really good explanation for how he got out of this thing that nobody else has escaped from. And then his fucking solution is just fire. Just <laughs> just shoot some fire at the, the side of it, and then that just allows him to burst out. And it's that's like, it. He's cooking himself. He's a, the fire immediately reflects back on his arm. Just like wait, wait, and then, and then he's just out. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that yep. worked, I guess. The okay. Salad, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then it's, <sighs> yeah. Then he gets it's beaten like, up by it's... the Jawas. Then he gets beaten up by Tuscan children. And he gets <laughs> beaten up by a Tuscan woman. And I'm kind of thinking, wow, you're really selling your main protagonist then, here. Then he gets beaten up because he fires a rocket at his own face. <laughs> he gets beaten up by himself. <laughs> <laughs> God, that moment! I think that was it for me when he did that. I was like, "Yeah, this is gonna." Is be that terrible. is that when the guys just, surround him with the shields and he's just like, "Yeah, I got this. I got yeah, this." Like, um, you've got a jetpack on. Fly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and at no point did he fly, and I'm just like, "What is going on here? Just oh, fucking fly! You fly now! You fly you now!" Fly now. <laughs> And he's got a flamethrower. You could actually put that underneath their shields. Yeah, didn't just shoot out of the ground. It'll reflect could, up like, at them. Yeah, zipped up on his thing. Then he could have fired his missile. Then yep. it would have dispersed, and the shields would have gone down. Then he would have got his flamethrower out and fucking melted a few. This it's this like, is nah, like this guy is meant to be the greatest. This guy is yep. meant to be the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy. Like he's a guy a with decades of experience. And he's just this old, confused man who doesn't know where he is or what's going on. In it episode two, like... he says in reference to those people who attacked him, they tried to kill him. And I legitimately was like, I don't think they did. They came to tickle you. Like, I don't think they actually <sighs> tried to kill you. If they were trying to kill you, they chose the worst fucking weapons, like, ever. Why not just shoot him with a rocket yeah, launcher that... from the other side of town? It's oh, so easy to kill people in this universe. Yeah, like the amount of weaponry they didn't, they chose like, we're going to go, and he's going to go, ooh. We're, we're like, going to surround you, right, with shields, and then we're going to we're gonna prod you with tasers that don't do much except like annoy yeah. you. And was, you know, I, 
disastrous. Just it's <laughs> yeah. so it's so lazy. Oh, Boba Fett. Okay, how how do you want us to do it? Poison snipers. Uh, you know, no, I want you to to form a circle around him with a shield and poke him with a couple of cattle prods. What if that doesn't work? It will. <laughs> I'm sure of it. What, it what if he work. flies out of our, our our trap? Don't worry. He's he's gonna he's just gonna be eating ice cream. Well, you know the See, thing they really fucking... didn't plan for was the Gamorian guards. Gamorian guards are well known to be the greatest warriors of all yeah. time. So <laughs> that was yeah, embarrassing. Where did, where, but the thing is, even with the Gamorian guards, it's like right when they left the the uh, nightclub or bar or whatever you know it is. They should have been right there immediately with them behind them. And they there's, weren't. Um, they, they shouldn't even have gone there in the first place. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, There's a reason Jabba didn't leave his palace. He was guarded. There was yeah. security. He, yeah. could <laughs> not, he could keep track of things. You just fucking... He didn't just walk down the street where anyone could take pot shots at him. That's the point of being a crime lord. Well, You're supposed to be smarter than that. With respect, though, Drinker. Don't oh, remind me. With respect. That, that fucking cringe shit where where it is, he's like, we expect a tribute to the mayor, and then he goes, aren't, aren't I supposed to be the crime lord? Yeah. Aren't, aren't I meant to get Th- this money? Is, this is where, if he, if this was smart, if he was some kind of badass, he would have like killed the guy, locked his head off, and sent that back, and he's yeah, like, there's your tribute. tribute. Yeah. And I expect something proper next time, motherfucker, it'll be your head on the plate next time. Yeah, that feels more in line with what we expect to be Boba Fett. I'll agree with that. Like I, when, the, <sighs> when the two Gamorrean guards turned up and he's like, you know, you refuse to, to kneel, you you know, you both showed loyalty. I thought he was gonna do the, uh, the, the Joker thing from the Dark Knight and throw a weapon down and go, whoever lives, will you be loyal? You know, you will be loyal to me. So I thought he was gonna have them fight. No. He's just like, do you want a job? Uh, I got really good benefits, dental. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows off his big fucking white tombstone veneers that he's just got, you know, which have been, which are great, Nick. Uh, and then the other guy comes in, talks to him like an absolute dickhead, and I, and it and it kept doing that pan away shot, you know, that 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 long shot, and I, and every time I did the long shot, you could see that he was stood. On where the the rancor, the, the the trap where the rancor is below, and obviously you know there might not be a rancor there, but you can still push the button, open it up. So I was like, he's Boba's just gonna push this button when this guy gets out of control. He's just gonna fall, ah, you know, fall down, and then he lob his head off, send it back to the man, and go, here's your tribute. No, he's just like, no, he's the he's the mayor's assistant. I'm gonna train him with respect. And it's just, oh, it's sanitized. It's just this sanitized, yeah. uh, boring uh, Boba. And, and of course, Fenix just there going, no, you, you've got to show strength. Uh, it's you've unbelievable. Be- <sighs> She's teaching him how to be a badass. She's trying, to, like, it's like, this is Boba Fett. He's like the representation of badassery. It's why he's got an enduring legacy. Everyone thinks he's badass. It's like, how is this happening? The it's, woman behind uh, Boba Fett. That that's I think that's honestly what they're going for. It's like she's gonna be the real like power behind him and she's gonna be the one who's like pragmatic and ruthless and he's just this dumb fuck just getting led like from place to place, just getting this, into problems and like needing her help to get out of it. This is Disney's only trick, whammon. That's well, the um, only thing they've got, and they just abuse it's just everything. Every single robot. show now, even the robots teaching him. It's like, yeah, the with fucking respect, pro respect. Control-troid. fucking Matt Perry <laughs> is like, maybe you should kill some people to send them back. Because uh, I, th- I thought it was bizarre. It's like these Gamorrean guards hyper loyal to both of their masters, being Java and Bib Fortuna. And you're like, uh huh, Bib Fortuna, the one you killed, Mister Fett. It's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so will you work for me? And they say yes. Like, I just I found that strange. I guess in retrospect, like wait, they're hyper loyal to Bim Fortuna. But if you say work for me, they'll be like sure. <laughs> that loyalty is uh, it doesn't extend past death, of course. It's uh, yeah. Fucking my my ridiculous. brother, who's um, he's a a Star Wars normie. He he likes Star Wars because we used to play Star Wars as a kid. You know, he he likes Star Wars because he likes the ships. He like he likes the original trilogy. 
Uh, he likes the aesthetic. He, you know, he's he's very controlled, but he is Mister ATST ATST. Look, you know, there's a reference, and uh, he was very excited for Book of Boba Fett. He really enjoyed the Mandalorian. And then I just got a text from him last night, just saying I've, I've seen the first two episodes of Boba Fett. I'm not impressed. I'm not <laughs> invested in this. And I was just like, that's that's your like your normie. That's who Disney really want, the person who doesn't really get too critical about stuff and just likes it because it's got a Star Wars brand on it. And even he, my brother's just like, I ain't feeling this. Yeah. I, I, there's there's just nothing to latch onto. Like I, I was saying earlier, the actual storytelling, the plot that they've got here is the most simplistic, basic shit that you can come up with. You know, it's like, oh, he escapes the Sarlacc pit. Then he gets he gets his armor taken away and he gets captured by the, the Tuscan Raiders. Okay, and then he has to learn their ways and earn their respect and then move on from there. You know, it's it's that same mentality as the Mandalorian, where everything is just as simple as possible. And don't get me wrong, that has kind of worked in the past because you had ridiculous, you know, the the, the ridiculous overblown nonsense of the, the sequel trilogy. And the Mandalorian was kind of refreshing because it was back to basics and it was just a, um, you know, it was a space Western, essentially. Mm. Nice and simple. Simple stories, just just nicely done. Um, but this is a different thing. He's he's not traveling from place to place. He's not getting into a new adventure every week. He's in one location and he's a crime lord and he's an established character that's supposed to be good at this stuff. He's supposed to know his business. And he, he acts like a rookie who's never done any of this stuff before. And you can't do that with him. Um, and you, you can't just rely on these really simplistic plots to drive something like this forward. It needs something more. Yeah, I think that... that uh, you're not going to get that from Disney, though. ...was making him the way, the way we want him, and we lost that already. So it's like, so what else has the show got? It's like, well, it's, it's high budget for a TV show. A lot of stuff looks nice. I guess here and there. The uh, I don't know if, how much we want to talk about episode two because I wouldn't want to spoil it for Az. You know, I, I know he's very invested. I, in I ain't gonna show. watch it. Um, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna done. bring. I'm, I'm done. I'm just gonna bring Comics Division in because um, he's just joining us. Hey man, <laughs> hey, how guys. you doing? Doing great, Hello, man. How are you doing? Sorry about hey, my hey. tardiness here. No, no, it's fine, man. Uh, you just uh, come in whenever you're ready. To be honest, so it's good to have you here. No, oh, thanks for inviting me. This this is fantastic. We're talking about uh, Boba Fett. Do you oh, see Boba yeah. Fett? Oh, Boba Fett, so much fun. <laughs> uh, drink of the gun train. Uh, we lost our shit with that. I don't know if you did because it was just perfect for. Uh, uh, to be fair, I watched it with uh, Fringy Rags, Jay, and Metal. Um, when the Tuscan Raiders just chilling, just doing this chilly stuff, and everything's kind of working out, and then this train just drives past and shoots all of them. We were just laughing. For yeah. <laughs> I, I had a good laugh it's because it's, it's not even like it's defending itself. It's just it's like, just ah, fuck you. Yeah, I just feel like being a dick. I'm just going to start I, I know, shooting at you. I know where they're going with it because um, this is something that used to happen in the Old West. You know, when they had when they run the trains from uh, the East Coast to the West, they would go and shoot Buffalo like that. They'd literally shoot from the train. So that's being it. This, this is dances with sand people. I mean, they're trying to recapture a lot of that kind of Western feel. And obviously it deals with, I guess, colonialism. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was actually a thing that happens and they're implementing it into oh. Star Wars now, which is fantastic. What's great is that this train is easily going like 150, like 200 <laughs> miles an hour. This it's is ridiculous. fast. And, and it's shooting at this, the Tuscan Raiders who are, what, half a mile away? I, yeah, you they're know, they're conservatively. Yeah. And it's hitting them fucking dead on and killing them. Like, these guys must be the most incredible fucking shots that have ever existed because they, they are not droids. They don't have assistance or anything. They're just firing with blasters and hitting them. Well, do you remember yeah. um, <laughs> troopers, then? when they fire back, they all hit their targets dead on as well. All the Tuscan yeah. Raiders hit all of them in the windows. It's just like, how the fuck did you do that? Yeah. Dude, yeah. uh, do you know my favorite character is the, the pilot droid. I love yeah, but he's just, he just bails the fuck out. He's like, yeah, fuck this, I'm out here. Yeah, Boba Fett like breaks into the pilot's place. He's just like, you know, stop the train. The droid just jumps out the window. <laughs> that was that was funny as hell. I mean, this, this episode made me laugh a lot for all the wrong yeah. reasons, of course. I don't want Boba Fett to make me fucking laugh. 
I know. It's I want Boba right. Fett to make me go, come on! The, the, that's the thing. The premise of it is good. Like, if you had Boba Fett as he was in Empire, you've got, like, the basis of a great character there. He's badass, he's cool, he's collected, he's ruthless. You know, he could be getting into all these adventures and, like, real kind of intrigue stuff where mm-hmm. he's got to outthink his opponents. Um, but it relies on having smart writers who are actually capable of writing good characters um, and and interesting storylines and who actually have some respect for the main character. And clearly that's not what we've got oh, here. Oh, a- absolutely not. I mean, there's a lot of stuff with this last episode, which it, it, it's far superior than what we got before, which is not saying a whole lot here. But if, if it was a different character, I could probably buy into it a little bit more. But since this is Boba Fett and it's like he wouldn't be helping sand people. The, he – when he got kidnapped and got free, he would have murdered everybody and moved on. You know, and, and that that's what? how I think a lot of people view Boba Fett as this ruthless killer. And this is not what we're getting. We're getting the another heart of gold type character. Dude, <sighs> when um when the gun train started attacking everybody and he instead of getting to cover was like, Oh no, two sand people that I must protect. I was like, yeah. What the hell? What are these come on? <laughs> it, it, it's, I'm amazed at the number of people that are defending this TV show. I mean, it, it's so mediocre, but it oh, was yeah. like, oh, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's like, it's, what it's, is there to defend? Okay. There's nothing to it. Yeah. I the, the, love the gun train. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still can't quite get over that's what the, the thing It was, uh, as everyone's pointed out, it was a fucking side quest in an RPG. It was <laughs> your your friend in the tribe was like, by the way, a gun train comes by here once per X amount of time, and you've got the opportunity right now. The quest is available for the next hour and 40 minutes. That's, that is all Mandalorian Season 1 was. Yeah. It was just going on side, side quests. quests. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you you you, you know, you've had the, the parts stolen from your ship. Okay, you've tracked down the people that have got it. Well, they're only going to give you the parts back if you go and defeat this monster and give them mm-hmm. an egg thing. And it's like that that is straight out of a fucking game. And it but, felt you know, the same there's, way here. There, there's a great point here from, from Jason Gallagher. They're ruining the mystery of Fett. And that's absolutely. that is an absolutely perfect point. Yeah. Like part of what made him so cool was his mystique. You didn't know that, that much about him. Excuse me, brought to you by the people who made Solo. I was about to say, like, <laughs> yeah, but I don't even think this is Boba Fett anymore. This is some other dude. He's like a hero man who wants I, to I, help I've been the calling world. him Beta Fett or Jake Fett because that's, it, it's, good. it's not know. Boba Fett. Yeah. Um, We've got it, Jake, what, Jake like, Skywalker and Beta Fett should team up. He may yeah. only have like four moments in the OT, but watch them. They do not match this guy. No. No disintegrations. Least. Yeah. yeah that's like the, everyone's like, oh, he's just a higher gun. Yeah, he's a higher gun that worked for Darth Vader, one of the most evil individuals in the Empire. I mean, come on. And Darth I, I, Vader I, I, felt the need I, to ward him out of everyone. Like, you, Mr. Fucking badass. You better chill. Like, it's yeah. like, imagine how, the power this guy has. Well, and Robert he's so Lundberg good. Benetton. He's so good at what he does that Darth motherfucking Vader hires him mm. to do his work for him. Mm. Like, the, like out of all the bounty hunters in the galaxy, he's the creme de la creme. Yeah. And he's the one that hides when they all go on their ships out to look for him. He's the one that's like, no, he's going to be hiding in the, got- in the garbage exhaust suit. I'm going to hide yeah. there too. He's the one that knew exactly what they were going to do. He's the smart fucker. And That's you got um, he's Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Matt Lando, literally the boss of Bespin, can't raise his voice at all and can barely complain. Meanwhile, Boba's like, "The fuck you doing with my my yeah. stuff?" He's no good for me dead. Is like you'll be no compensated if we dead, fuck it yeah. up. Don't worry. Imagine the balls on that guy, and, and and that's the thing. It's like he wouldn't have those balls unless they were earned. Uh, yeah. So let's see him, and then it's like. Oh no! I must defend the sad people from the gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. He, he's the only guy that has the balls to talk smack to Vader and not get force choked. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if Vader yeah. didn't do that, it means Vader has respect for him. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm already tired of being. Of it, it doesn't want to toss. Doesn't want to tangle. I've had enough of hero fat, and I think we're going to get loads more of it. Well, oh, if, sure. if they want to make him an anti-hero, you, you got to show the process, right? You can't just make him come out of the Sarlacc pit. Hey, look, guys, I've changed, which is basically what they've done, which is dumb. You know, mm-hmm. you, you have to have justification for a change in a character's character, and we're, and we're not seeing it. And it's, it's crazy how people are just accepting it or justifying he, he, he the change. Jesus. Yeah, it, yeah it's like Jesus and the Sarlacc well, pit. I think a lot of the people who are accepting it 
you've either forgotten about how he was in Empire and Return of the Jedi or basically just didn't even pay attention back then. And so they're basing it on what they saw in Mandalorian. I wonder it's like, if uh, they just want to be able to like him straight up instead of liking a bad guy. Like they just want to let their audiences be like, no, he's a good guy and I <laughs> like him. You just ended up on the wrong side earlier, that's all. Well, and this is something that Disney keeps doing is that they, they keep taking these villainous characters and turning them into misunderstood antag or not protagonists, I'm sorry, uh, anti heroes. And it's like, that's not the case. Cruel Devil, I mean, her, her name is literally Cruel Devil. I mean, Boba Fett is a bounty hunter that goes and captures people and brings them back to the Empire. He works for Darth Vader. He's not a good guy. Why, why can't people accept this? You know, he, know. That's the thing. It, someone was like, well, he's just a bounty hunter. That doesn't mean he's, he's neutral. It's like, no, no, no. He clearly was like, fuck Luke Skywalker and his team. We oh, absolutely. He, he's, he's an excessive force kind of guy. Um, but yeah, like the Saru's here says, Loki character development vibes. That's, that's what it feels like. You know, uh, taking a really mm-hmm. cool, interesting antagonist and then making him a fucking pussy. Oh God, that actually, that's, it's the same <laughs> thing. You're right. It is the same so fucking low. thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> same goddamn thing. Stop it. Just stop sterilizing my villains. Just, just, just stay away from them. You know, like, we don't need these characters expanded upon. I never wanted to know more about Boba Fett. He was Agreed. cool because he was mysterious. You know, he was cool because he had limited screen time, but he made an impression because he was so striking and, and, and interesting to look at. Um, and he was badass, clearly. That's it. I don't want to know his backstory. I don't want to get a redemption arc for him. I don't want him to go through all this <laughs> stuff and see him sitting on a land speeder going, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I was so dumb. <laughs> I think the show oh, they, oh, he, I don't, I don't he know. was always a good guy drinker. He just got mixed up in something, you know? I'm <laughs> waiting for him to fucking say that. You know what? Darth Vader has his wife and he was gonna kill her unless he did every like I swear to God if they recontextualize him completely. Oh <laughs> I, I will send you the tweet as of what we're talking about. It's it's hilarious. Absolutely I hilarious. I think I've seen it. I thought that was in no, Outtake it's take from not. No, it's not. Recording. It's in the show. Yeah, it's in the show. It's embarrassing. It's uh, it's it's weird as well because like the the actor is from New Zealand and like his New Zealand accent and his mannerisms really come through. Um, Mar- at, at points, Mar- yeah. Um, <clears throat> and like I say, you know, he's, I'm sure he's a cool guy, but like he's also 61 years old and he his age doesn't match up with what Boba Fett should no. actually be in this. You know, he's very clearly an elderly man who's out of shape now, and he just doesn't look anything like how Boba Fett looked in the, you know, the OT. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, he fell in the Sarlacc pit and came out overweight. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, it's just and, like and he felt like, because, yeah, he looked like he was a guy in his 30s in the, in the, in the OT. And then he came out and suddenly he's 60 years old and he's got a dad bod and like he doesn't fit into his armor anymore. And he just, yeah, they should have just cast someone else, I think, in this role. Yeah, for sure. But it's, no, they're not going to do that. Well, clearly they haven't well, done it, so never mind. Maybe, I'm assuming we're all pretty much good. Like, I don't oh, know if the show no. should have been made anyway. No, Just, it shouldn't uh, have. Yeah. I mean, that, that was like one of my, one of the things I, I pointed out. is like, you know, I don't understand why the same people saved him. I, I think they would have just gone and killed him instead. But we wouldn't have a show, and I'm completely fine with that. Or, or just... I don't know. Like, have him escape and just make his own way back to civilization if mm-hmm. you really want to maintain his... his you know, his coolness or his mystique or whatever, um, rather than have him need help from everybody around him. Well, but, he's already yeah, been like beaten the, up by loads of people. Can I? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I, the, I just wanted to see Az's face uh, when I say this, because I just realized you wouldn't know about this. As do you believe me when I say that in episode two, uh, Tamir Morrison has to act as though a lizard climbs into his brain and then a tentacle, <laughs> a tentacle tree wraps around him. <laughs> <laughs> do you believe that that is something that happens I, I think it's funny that they're appropriating Native American culture to make this TV show it goes up his nose doesn't it and he has that yeah, whole it like oh, oh. it says it'll go onto his brain or whatever and I think when it was happening we were just like is this real like, is this- you know, do, you re- Mar, do you remember his line though because he's like it, it fucking crawls up his nostrils and into his, his brain cavity and and yeah. he, he just goes, oh, I'm sorry, I think I accidentally swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It's so fucking weird. 
And then he comes back with a, a, a fucking branch, and they're like, it's a good branch. <laughs> you're like, yeah. What? That's like, I always thought the gaffy sticks were made of metal. And it's like, it, you are, you're on a desert planet. Where the I'm hell so are you confused. finding wood? I think you should be confused. He he wanders off for a spirit walk, and he ends up with a twig, and he brings it back, and they turn yeah. it into a big old stick for him. And there's it's a really hell. like long indulgent scene of him crafting this this hitting yeah. stick. <laughs> oh god, it takes like, so you long. You see every moment of this, this fucking it's so process. Low. It's like, didn't you guys want always wonder how he got his stick? You're like, no. <laughs> but this this is just like in the Mandalorian, where you have to like in the first few episodes they craft bits of his armor. And you get to see the Forge Master like hammering away at it and building it and stuff. And then they get to a certain point and they're just like, nah, fuck it, just give them a full suit. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's that same thing. They they think that like just showing processes like this in like excruciating detail equals narrative depth. Mm. And it's not the same thing. <sighs> I have no idea what's going on. Uh, don't worry about it. Okay, you've seen dances you with wouldn't. wolves, right? Uh, a long, 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 long time ago. Th- that's basically the plot of this episode. It dances with oh, okay. sand people. Yeah, dances in, with in space. People, right. Okay. And here, here's the thing. I mean, they're, they're so on the nose with a lot of things here, which is stupid. It's like if you want to see a good space western, go watch Firefly. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it, it was so such a good series. But this, I mean, it it pales in comparison to many other things I've watched recently. It's like I, I have no emotional investment. Drinker, when you recommended Arcane, I went out and I watched it. And like in that first episode, I was wrapped into it. I was planning on making a video that night, and I ended up watching like the first like three or four episodes of that series, and it was just amazing. The show, I'm like, ah, Steve Muller, as <laughs> there you go. All right, all right, we'll do it. I've done more, more homework than Muller. Oh, um. I, by the way, it's totally fair that you feel that way because it's something that I think we probably all noticed because we've, we've focused on Boba Fett, but there are no fucking characters in the show. Um, no. One of the things I noticed about Fennec is like, wait, why haven't we had the conversation where Fennec says, well, my whole life is devoted to you. That's um, that's awkward, honestly. Like, I like <laughs> you, but I mean, I guess I can't do anything for myself ever again. And I have to work to make sure you are strong, powerful, and in charge. Mm-hmm. My agency is over. It's like that seems like a lot for a person who's the one of the most famous assassins in history. Like what what how does she feel about all of this? And, and, and what, are, the, what are her drives, you know? Mm-hmm. And the thing is she's clearly like better at like suited to all of this stuff than he is. Like yep. she is way more ruthless and pragmatic than him. She's and like far more Boba Fett than Boba Fett is. Yeah. 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 It, it's like she's she's the old the version point, of Boba it? Fett. Trying to tell him, like, no, this is the stuff you should do. Like, this is smart. This is um, this is going to keep you alive. And he's just like, nah, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> so yeah. Walk into town. We'll just see what happens, you know? Two episodes in, our secondary character, like, the main one. I have no idea uh, anything more about her than I do from Mandalorian. It's like, she was just really good assassin who's helping Boba. You're like, okay, that's that, I guess. It's fine. And then you think about all the Tusken Raiders. He's spent a shit ton of time with them. He's like, which characters do you like the most of the Tusken Raiders? Like, there's woman, there's child, there's leader man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, it becomes kind of difficult to tell when they've all got the same mask on. And, like, all and you get the, out ooh, of them ooh, is... Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, it's kind of hard to relate to a character whose face you can't see and doesn't speak any language you understand. This is why... In the 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 in the like OT, the, the Tuscan <laughs> Raiders were saw were seen on screen for like m- seconds mm-hmm. because Lucas knew this is just a concept that's not going to fucking you can't base an entire fucking story around these people because they they just communicate in grunts and they don't have faces they're just a generic desert people that are scary that's all they're supposed to be yeah exactly um and but. Yeah, well, let's give them depth. With let's make it a uh, Native American alleg- allegory, and uh, we'll we'll talk about uh, colonialism. Yep. Uh, why, why did they show us colonialism? Making the colonialism is so hot right now. Oh, you know? it sure is. It's uh, you know it's so great to have a hot topic of of something that happened hundreds of years ago. You oh, know? But, but we need to have you, a conversation about it, as We need to. We, need to why? we just we just have to deal with it. Why, why do we have to have a conversation about the the natural development of the world? 
because, because as, unfair, don't you as, feel personal responsibility for things that happened 300 years before you were born? Well, if you don't, I do, then you, sir, are a bigot. Everyone was doing it, so I joined in. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just it, though. It's like, it, they feel like it, only the Europeans colonized. Hello? Totally Hello? not true. They always forget about that. And it's like, well, how were they able to do it? Because they had better technology, because they advanced quicker. I mean, it's just like, what do you and want to... talk about, you know, the lands of the, the Native Americans. Oh, they came and they took the lands. Uh, what were the Native Americans doing while they were there? Oh, yeah, yeah. They were murdering each other and taking each other's lands. For I'd centuries. like to point out as well that they, they took those lands from probably the Neanderthals or whoever was yeah, native yeah, yeah. there before yeah. them. So it's like... Just being there for a while doesn't mean you own it. Like, well, another you, thing that made it so the... easy for the Europeans to colonize is that they were hit by a pretty nasty plague that killed a very large percentage of their population, which is the reason why, for the most part, the states were you know pretty much vacant. And it's the reason why the Europeans were able to go in and conquer. I mean, if that didn't well, happen, the, the it would Incas be were in the middle of a civil war historic. as well, yeah. weren't they? The Incas were in the middle of a civil war with each other. Um, so they were easy because, you know, there were... What the, the one of the sides was trying to say, hey, you know, we'll work with you if you help us get rid of our enemy. And so they helped get rid of their enemy and they just went, right, I'm going to fuck you up now, boys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and on, on top of that, the, the Maya Empire already collapsed and the Aztecs, for the most part, we really didn't stand a chance because you had people coming in with guns and armor. Yeah. And they, they, uh, oh, I, I, great. Like, Thousands, literally, a, 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 a thou an army of thousands of uh, Aztecs and Incas were going up against, uh, like an army of like a hundred people with projectile weapons, and they were massacring the oh, uh, the Aztecs, just massacring them. Well, you saw things uh, like that. Um, what was it? The Battle of Rocks Drift in Africa, where it's like you've got like a you know two hundred British guys up against probably about five thousand um, tribesmen. Zulu. Yeah, Zulu, yeah. And mm -hmm. they, they held their ground because it's like, well, guns are quite good against spears, as we've discovered. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> have you seen well, Infinity in the, in the, War? Yeah, they, they basically they had uh, obsidian weapons, which pale in comparison to you know what the Europeans had, which was steel. Um, and you know what's really good if you want to assassinate, say, a crime lord who's like walking through your town? A fucking gun! A gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a thermal <laughs> gun. You, know you know what's not good? A, a shield and, a, and a, a, an electric spear that tickles them. <sighs> that was so stupid. Yes, it was. And you know what? With that, that format for that episode being that we got present day, then flashback, then present day, with episode two, I was just desperately waiting to go back to present day because I was like, all right, at least we got the huts have moved in. Finally, some yeah, level of like, building. Why did why did that take so long too? You, you think that the first thing would have happened know. after Jabba's death was his cousin would have rolled in? God, it was and, dumb. And, and when it's just like five years later, I mean, the the issue is we don't have any kind of like how how long is the time jump? Is, is this like a week after Return of the Jedi? Is it five years? I mean, what's what's going on here? It's well, um we, in the first in the first episode we saw the. Uh, we saw, like, for a brief second, the uh, the cloning facility, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we saw the movie get flashed in the episode two as well. I'm and curious. I, well, I, just, I thought we were going to have um, Tamura Morrison, do, you know, doing Django Fett. So I actually thought we were going to have some Django Fett building, you know, Boba up. So, like, to, you know, this is what, you know, this is where you've come from. This is what we are, mm -hmm. you know. Da, da, da. Uh, and we'd have a DA, you know, a DA Tamura Morrison with, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. Hair and the like, tattoo. No, we're just we're just gonna have him be an absolute clown show uh and a moron uh who after walking into Jabba's palace, murdering Bib Fortuna and the people around him, sitting down and go, I'm gonna be a nice guy now. Oh so you just murdered <laughs> the whole fucking people to take over, and then you sat down and like, I won't be good boy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure every I'm Which sure everyone's motivation? gonna play ball with me. Yeah. Things got lost in translation because it's like I'll rule with respect, and you just look at the corpse of Bib Fortuna like uh <laughs> what, not so much. What? But wh why? Why does the most feared bounty hunter in the galaxy want to be a crime lord? They haven't even established that yet. I don't know. I yeah, it, you're right. It feels like that. That's a missing thing. But when did? If you guys said like, where would Boba Fett end up if he got out of the Sarlacc pit? And everyone goes, well, obviously ruling Tatooine. You're like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> Going like, back what? to being a bounty what? hunter is what I think he would have done. 
Yeah. Why uh, yeah, I think he would, he would, he'd be looking for Han Solo again to get some comeuppance. I wouldn't. Well, that's the thing. I wouldn't be surprised if he held a grudge against the fucking rebels. It's like, yeah. you cunts. You threw me into a sand yeah, vagina. Well, he, <laughs> yeah, I definitely hate Han Solo for fucking fucking up his jetpack and sending him flying in there. But no, he, he wants to be the boss of Moss Espa. And you're like, I don't know why, but okay. Because reasons, Mahler. Maybe, maybe he read the script. <laughs> God, there's no character. It's when he just got out of this timeline, there's that's... just a script lying there next we, to him. When we did Mando, because I, I, I'm not sure if you guys line up with this, but I just think like Mando has no character at all either. Like this no, two seasons, and we barely have any clue who this guy is. But at least it's like, okay, you got a prepackaged one this time, so you can't fuck this up, right? And they are draining <laughs> him of character. <laughs> yeah, becoming this fucking blank slate that's just gonna do stuff. Well, it's like they never even bothered to watch the original, so they don't know what they're working from. It's just like, yeah, we're just starting fresh with this guy. We're just making him into whatever we, we want. Um, that That's the, the feeling you get from it. There's no connection there. Um, and what, yeah, the decisions that he makes have no common dumb. sense behind them. Fuck no. Do you remember as well when the mayor just executes um, the prisoner? <laughs> and then everyone pulls guns on each other. I was like, yeah, that was pretty stupid. Like, why would you just arbitrarily go, well, that guy's dead now? It's like, Boba could have shot you as a result. Like, why is everybody stupid? Uh, oh, yeah, when they, when they go into the his... writing. Yeah, when they go into his palace and, like, they've got no backup or anything, and Boba's like, yeah, I just unmasked this, this assassin that you sent to kill me. You know, I'm mad now. Mm -hmm. Sure, hope you don't take advantage of me being here pretty much on my own um, <laughs> and just kill me right now. No investigative like skills at all as well. It's just like, pretty sure this guy said, said by you, he said so. And then he's like, no, he's a member of the Goopy Goopy clan. And then he's like, aha, <laughs> so you admitted. I was like, what? admit what? Remember, what? Bo Boba's armor isn't Beskar. He's, his armor isn't Beskar armor. Do or steal. Uh, yeah, just to, just to answer stuff. here. Standard, um, standard stuff, yeah. Yeah, not, not to worry. Like, I know those super chats come in. We tend to just do a bit of, like, just talking amongst ourselves. Um, and then we, we do the super chats um, a little bit later on. So don't worry. I will get to all of them. So um, not to worry about that. Sorry, guys. I just wanted to do a bit of housekeeping there. Sure. No problem. No problem. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Um, <sighs> well, I don't know if it's disappointing. This is almost exactly what I thought we'd get. Yeah. I, I think the question I always ask myself with stuff like this, like when you get a prequel that's going to shed light on a, a character that we already know, all that stuff, it's like, is this a story that needs to be told? Is is no. is the 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 universe of Star Wars crying out to learn more about Boba Fett and and give him like a continuation? I, 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 I think there could be a ki I think there could be a, a really fun, kick ass. A uh, bounty hunter story with this character. Yeah, I, I mean, they have been. I mean, there's comics about him, and they could have mm. adapted something like that. But um, the answer coming from Disney is no. I uh, I, I guess I would go as far as saying like no, ne no story is necessary. I mean, it'd be kind of nice if Star Wars went dormant for a while. Um, Agreed. But they could all be good, right? Under the right direction, under the right creative powers. But wait. It, it, this ain't it. Like giving Boba Fett to people who are like, we better not have a drop of blood. It's like the fuck. Well, yeah. Star Wars doesn't need to go dormant. Star Wars needs to get away from Disney. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, the, This that's is this is the it, it's go, it's going through that same MCU assembly line mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. process where the like so far Boba Fett looks exactly and feels exactly like Mando. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's the same assembly line that it's gone through, and it, whatever else that we see, then if there's going to be like, um, you know, Rangers of the New Republic or or the the Acolyte, it's all going to have that same exact look and feel because it's just come off the assembly line. Um, and it, going back to what I said right at the beginning, it's just more content. Just just get as much of it out there as you can. Just just. Bland, disposable content. It's soulless, this is, yeah. just soulless stuff. There's, Con there's, consume product and get excited character. for more product. Yeah, this, this yeah. movie, or sorry, this show is just, it's going to McDonald's. It's just yeah. getting a Big Mac <laughs> from McDonald's. It's all prepackaged, it's all standardized. Yeah. It's just, you're going to get the same experience every fucking time. 
I don't know. I get uh, a dopamine so, hit from a hamburger, at least. For the love of Christ, can he stop taking off his fucking helmet, please? <laughs> yeah. I'm so tired of that trope. And it's yeah, like, yeah, it's not even just superheroes now. How, how will you see my face? It's extended to fucking Boba Fett. Like, he's just like Spider Man and Iron Man, everyone. Like, they have to take their goddamn face coverings off. Yep. Uh, that, that's one thing I really liked about Dread, is they actually had oh, him yeah. keep the helmet on the entire freaking time, because that's the character. And that's because yep. Carl Urban's a boss. Yes, he is. Boba Fett is walking around in a place where everyone fucking hates him at risk. It was like, with, with, it was like oh, I put coins in my helmet. I can't put it on. Oh, if only they gave me a beer. <laughs> You could you can see I mean Car if you've seen like how Carver Urban is in real life he's, he looks like a really fucking cool dude yeah really I, I, nice I met cool him yeah dude. he I, I got him to autograph the um his dread headshot because that movie was nice. fantastic and I actually told him like I'm glad you kept the helmet on and and, and it's too bad we're not getting a sequel he's like well at the time they're going to do the TV show and I was like mm. yeah but it's not about dread and that show never manifest but yeah dude's super cool. Yeah, but you just imagine there'll be him not even complaining and probably being quite happy just to keep the helmet on. Yeah, and 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 be uh, give a true representation of uh, dread. Uh, and and uh, that's you know that's one of the strengths of the film is is the fact that you don't have him doing a Sylvester Stallone and taking it off in two minutes because your ego gets in the way. No, it's a very simple story, dread. A very simple story exceedingly well told mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because you feel the characters are the characters uh it makes sense for anderson not to have the helmet being a psychop and it makes sense for dread to have the helmet because that's what dread does you don't need to know too much about it i don't need to know about dread's past i don't need to know about his childhood i don't know any about his mum or dad or his fucking pet rabbit i don't need to know any of that i need to know that dread goes into a building kicks fucking ass and then leaves that's yep. what i need to know and that's what you got in that film that's why dread 2012 is fucking amazing and what it takes a lot of talent film. as an actor to be able to just act with that lower restraint. part of your face yeah to have that restraint mm -hmm. uh is ah oh. no, like see the active face they yeah. paint the active face <laughs> Let me see uh, your dent. Let me see your veneers. Your fresh new shiny fucking he, tombstone he veneers. Loves smiling. <laughs> he's a he is a smiler, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I just, just bought myself uh, some new teeth with my Disney money. He just <laughs> looks so old. He just he's he's slow and he's he's kind of creaky and just overweight and just. No, this guy shouldn't be doing Boba Fett. Stop. Well, isn't Boba Fett meant to be like the same age as fucking Hans around Han Solo's age? Yeah, this this is what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. like how yeah. did he go from what he was in in Return of the Jedi when he was like probably in his mid thirties, like early forties, to this like just overnight? It doesn't make any sense. You're overthinking. Don't 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 think about it. Just, just accept, just accept. Like Samur Morrison, he's he was the clone of Django. It's, people like they have been pumping the sequels. It's so funny because you guys remember a time, right, where everyone was like, "Thank goodness they didn't reference the sequels in the <laughs> uh, sorry, the, the prequels in the sequels." Um, yeah. Do they remember uh, TFA didn't touch the prequels at all? But then I think it was it Mandalorian that showed a super battle droid, and it was like, "Oh, all right." I guess. Yeah. All right. Okay. And this show is just straight up, just like, look, it's Camino. You guys like Camino? Look, mm. it's, it's, oh, it's, and I was just like, yeah, I guess we're because who knows what we'll get eventually if they keep flashing Camino. They might give us that scene where Django gives Boba advice. You know, uh, <laughs> you, you, the, the possibilities. He'll eventually go to Camino, and then he'll just be speaking to Boba, and he'll, he'll literally just go, "One day." All of this would be yours. And it's just be his armor. <laughs> yeah. That's all it'll be. And he'll be like, oh, great. Okay, great character development. Yeah, um, this show and Mando, they're all fated to try and lead up to the sequel ca canon as well, which is just like, that's even more mistakes waiting to happen. All roads lead to Jake Skywalker. Yep. The yep. thing is, are they, uh, are they really doing that? Or are they just quietly trying to bury the sequels? <laughs> Because I, I I've always I've I've had that impression with with Mandalorian and stuff that it's it's not trying to like retcon them or anything. It's just like we're gonna we're gonna focus now on a different time period before all the sequel trilogy stuff happened, and we're we're not gonna 
Um, we're, we're not going to countermand them or anything. We're just going to uh, kind of forget about them and just not talk about them anymore. I kind of just... think that's the direction you're going with, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I guess we'll see. Because they can't... They can't just like retcon them out of existence. That's never going to happen, despite no. what fucking rumors say. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's going to be the the best you can hope for is that they will just go in a different direction. They'll focus on a different time period and just kind of not talk about the sequels anymore and hope that people kind of quietly forget about them because it's it's going to piss off whatever fans exist out there who support the sequels still and love them. Um, at least this way, they can still cling to the idea that those those movies are canon, um, and while the, the the TV shows just build a whole different universe set in a different time period. I want to see the 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 story of Jaw Jaw just trying to make things work after everything went to shit in the streets of Naboo. He's like scrounging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the Darth Jar Jar theory. That that's the reason why I think everything's gone to shit. It's really Jar Jar. I want Hobo Jar Jar. He's got a big beard, and he's just like, I used to be a senator. <laughs> I used to be a senator. It, it's uh, shit from the street. It, it just makes me think of, um, for some reason, the Merovingian from Matrix Four, where yeah. suddenly <laughs> the fucking hobo who just yells abuse at the the. The, the rest of the characters, and he's like one of one of those French soldiers from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where he's on the battlements. <laughs> like, I fought in your general direction. <laughs> I, I was I was <laughs> seriously laughing during that scene. <laughs> it's like, what have you done to this guy? What the fuck? Like, I he's, know he was a, a bit goofy to begin with, but at least he had a veneer of coolness about him. Now yeah. it's just like you now made he's him got into a this... veneer of teeth. <laughs> yeah. nice. You're in veneers ass, honestly. <laughs> I can't every time I see him, I can't. That's all I can see is his new fucking veneers. That's all I can see. They're shining like the fucking sun, man. <laughs> I've never seen anything so white. And that's coming from me. It's like it's like on fucking Top Gear when Richard Hammond got his teeth whitened and they just kept taking the piss. <laughs> Give us a nice big smile, Hammond. They mercilessly destroyed him for, for months about his teeth. <laughs> I didn't have them. <laughs> oh no. He looks like he's ready to try and cosplay Freddie Mercury now he's got them <laughs> going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Boogie. It's just like, whoa, whoa, what happened there? I've got a different mouth. The oh, mouth Ooh, with respect. The Boogalorian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, my, my favorite is the Blandalorian. <laughs> so, somebody put that on Twitter today. I was like, dude, I am so stealing that. That that's great. That is very, very good. Yeah. I like beta fat. Beta yeah. fat's a good one. I uh, I meant to ask you guys, because I don't think I'm ever gonna watch Hawkeye. What, <laughs> what the what the fuck? Like it's just one of those shows that I've just got zero interest in. I don't think I can even force myself to watch it. Like is uh, is don't bother. I didn't watch it yet either. But if you <laughs> right. don't watch it, how on earth are you gonna really like the Disney stuff or, or you know the, the Marvel or the D plus series? Well, I I really it. liked it. Um, Daredevil. Yeah, from, from back in the show. day, dude. And I think I loved, everybody did. I, I love watching it again. And yeah, Vincent yeah. D'Onofrio's Kingpin is incredible in that show. Oh, and they incredible. They totally just took the piss out of the character because i mean he's supposed to be intimidating and scary and at the end of the show you're like um this character's a pussy no no one's gonna respect or, or care about him now because they let they me totally let me take let me just him. take a wild guess just kind of you know shot in the dark here i bet that there's a, a female crime lord that uh is either working with him or is bossing him around that ends up intimidating him and and you're not telling him what off. to do I mean, no, he's he's still the, the top top rung, but um, yeah, it, 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 you're not too too far off with that. I uh, well, well, imagine my show TV series coming. You no. have to, you have to watch Hawkeye. So excited because there's an Echo to who the fuck is 
going to watch that? No one. This is, this who, is who, who's uh, for? I don't know. This, this is like in Loki, right? You know when you start to diverge from the main timeline and it's like, oh, it's getting out of control. It's getting out of control. Oh, shit. Now they're branching out of control. Like, <laughs> and they're, they're everywhere now and there's like so many different realities. That's where we're at with TV shows now. Now we've got like, yeah, like we've got this. We've got a Cassian Andor series apparently coming. <laughs> Nobody asked for that. Who <laughs> wants that? Who asks for this stuff? You know, you know that that fucking Twi'lek that gets thrown into the the Rancor pit in Return of the Jedi. She's going to get a prequel series. I guarantee it. <laughs> she she was Jabba's beloved. She was going to betray him and take down the whole system. She she yeah. had dreams, man. She was going to do amazing things, and then she got enslaved by the patriarchy or something, and like thrown into a Rancor pit, and then she got eaten by the patriarchy. Like the the there's this is just we're getting to levels of just obscurity that just baffle the mind like why are we doing this why are we having I, to I like pick out these characters that no one cares about no i'm waiting for the geode series <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fucking rock sitting there in a room <laughs> you, know, you know people will eat it up oh man i just uh yeah i i, I, I don't know where we're supposed to go with all this stuff I don't know who's. No I, I don't know who it's meant to appeal to. Like, the, maybe no if you're one. the most there, there the are people hard like of it. fans. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's Star Wars, and they'll just consume it. That that's the thing that is so sad about it. And this is the thing I, I keep calling out with, with this the show in particular is that you people are nothing more than suckers who whoa, will consume whoa, whoa, anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy with the you people, okay? <laughs> who, who who will go and consume anything because it has Star Wars on it? I mean, it, it's. You got to think for yourself and and look past the label. But they have a radically um, shrunk audience because they ripped it apart during the sequel trilogy, and so you know the the, the people who would have just turned up because Star Wars is now vastly reduced to how it how it was before. Yeah. I want Porkins a Star Wars story. <laughs> He, he, where he has time. to get into shape so he can get into the uh, X Wing. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he has to slum down from 500 to 300 pounds so he can fit in his white wing. <laughs> no, dude, don't, don't yeah. say like One man's can... battle against the, the enemy man. he can't defeat. Hello. Gravity. They'll say he's not even <laughs> human and that his species is actually thin for, for, for his species and that you shouldn't have been making fun of him this whole time. That's Aww. what we'll do. That'll be the big climax. There we go. Cassian Blandor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> We've lost ass. <laughs> man down, man down. <laughs> this is the fucking best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> fucking hell. It is nice. It's got no charisma. No, that's gonna, that's that's gonna come story. and go so quick, Cassian. Oh. Like, Cassian Blander, that's it. That's done. I'm gonna. That's every video that I see him in. Cassian Blander, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got bigs. Like, ah, uh, yeah. The 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 fucking possibilities are endless. Honestly, well, Final Fantasy took bigs and wedge and did wonderful things with them. So they there really did. I was I was genuinely upset when they died. <laughs> Then they all came back, so it was fine. Yeah, then they all came back again, apart from like, Jesse. Oh, uh, there's a, there's an implication that she's still alive though, because her gloves yeah. or something is on the, the table. So, no one's truly gone. No one's truly Why? dead. Yeah. No why didn't Boba Fett keep hanging out with the Tusken Raiders? By the way, like why isn't Boba's he leaving? Like, because he's fighting colonialism. Yep, Mahler. He, he's learning their ways, Mahler, and he's but fighting why? colonialism. He has his because own Because he ways. wants that sweet hitting stick <laughs> that they're going to make for him. <laughs> well, you're right, as well. <laughs> it's just everything so shit, <laughs> and it's just not even thought out. There's no fucking reasoning behind anything whatsoever. It's just thing must happen now so we can do thing to move the thing. Mala, don't you understand? We're just we're just not smart enough to understand it. This is oh. a complex universe <laughs> with complex races. 
on different varying planets that have been thrust into a complex war and it's been reduced down to fucking a big shiny veneer face. <laughs> I'm done really with got his, that. Um, he's got his speedo and he's headed back to the sad people like I'm going to give them my speedo it's like actually no I'm just going to go to the nearest town yeah, I'm just going to drive away back. is he going to turn up there and Tom fat. Cruise is going to be in a samurai outfit and fucking Daniel Day Lewis is going to have big fucking flowing brown hair and then Pocahontas is going to be next to them as well Jeez. here we go here's you get the best it one you get it yet? <laughs> Star Wars, do things. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's where we're at. It's just... Oh. Uh, fucking hell, man. Well, the thing that made... Uh, I mean, a lot of these movies enjoyable is the fact that we, we got them, you know, every three years rather than, like, multiple things a year. So it, it was fresh and new whenever it came out. Now we're we're getting inundated with all this content. And it's just like... I, I literally I, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, because there's that's, nothing that's it. To, that's what it is. To it's grab content. onto. There's nothing that makes you as a human being uh, appeal to your legitimate senses of I empathize or relate or sympathize with anything because nothing is happening that makes that ha uh, makes that connection. Well, you know what you know what occurred to me right when I was watching episode two of Boba Fett. I spent a good half of that episode on my phone, just just <laughs> fucking looking at stuff. I ordered some booze off Amazon, nice. and I just thought to myself, that is exactly the kind of person that they are appealing to with this show. It's people who aren't even really watching it or paying attention. It's yeah. just the kind of show that you have on in the background while you're yep. fucking around on on your phone. Uh, or doing something else and it's like you can look up occasionally and see some people shooting some people and and people walking about like literally star wars do things and and that that's just enough to keep you amused that's all it is it's just background content well, okay. a lot to me, uh, can i share like... something drinker can i share something with you you absolutely can share things with me as thank you this oh. is hey this is uh <laughs> this is 46 seconds long has a better plot and is more fun than than fucking anything that Star Wars has released. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You're right. I'm so invested. I know. I, w I want you. I want you to. Is eat he gonna the get cup. a steak? Eat the do cup. it. Come on, you can do it. Do it, little on. guy. It has more character development. That's for sure. Yeah, come on. You can do. Oh, oh, Billy. Got it. You've got it. You've got this, little guy. <laughs> oh. Oh. This is phenomenal. Oh, Come, on. Come on. If that steak isn't gone by the end of the clip, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, it, oh, oh, my lord. This is. Oh, that's <laughs> what the fuck? Well, he's bought into it anyway. Oh, he's tucking onto it now. There you go. We, that's it. Right. I'm ready for the sequel. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm invested. Ready for the that sequel after that. that Bring was it on. Bring it on. Pretty good performances, too. There we that go. was more, the more exciting one. than Boba Fett. Tangerine, a Star Wars story. <laughs> we would check it out. I met a Boba <laughs> Fett the size of a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the thing that's so funny about it. it as you just demonstrated, uh, you, you can put a camera on a tangerine, it would be far more entertaining than uh, anything that's coming off of D. Plus. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, Are you not excited for Agatha? The no. series, oh, the I, Echo, I'm, the series for so Ironheart, excited. the series. This You're is like, what I mean. Agatha it's <sighs> every Man. every series then just gives like spawns like half a dozen other spin-off shows. It's a never-ending uh, cycle of just insanity. You're not excited for the 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 lesbian portal puncher in Doctor Strange Two, America Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the, the and, and to be I fair, it, the character out. was fine until Gabby Rivera got a hold of her, and then they just totally trashed her. And her two mums. Yeah, that's I'm, all Gabby I'm Rivera. Just, man, I'm holding out for Captain Marvel too. Sorry, the Marvels. The Marvel. <laughs> I, I'm that sure makes me it's laugh. It's not actually called Captain Marvel too. Yeah, you know, that, that's that's funny. That movie is going to pay off my student loans. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Disney <laughs> Plus is going to make you a millionaire, man. 
<laughs> it's it yeah. But this is this is probably I guess the problem, right? Things like Boba Fett and, and Cassie and Andor and all that other crap. Like it's not so it's not even stuff that people are gonna care about enough for us to even bother reviewing. It's just like I say, it's just bland, forgettable content. Do they like, can't even do anything with it? It's like bulletproof. Like the, the, the a year after Cassie and Andor comes out, there will be people who are like, When did that did that show actually come out? It's like, Yeah, it did. Yeah. All the episodes. It was terrible. <laughs> but it, it yeah, it's like it's like um it's gonna be like Venom Two, where I have to keep reminding myself that it exists and I saw it. <laughs> 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 it's like, yeah, two minutes after leaving the cinema, I forgot that that fucking movie even happened. <laughs> We're in a weird era. For did, did you see Cowboy Bebop? Oh. No. I, I, I've, I, I've I, started watching the original like because I'm really oh, enjoying that. But, great. Mm, I, I watched like the first 15 minutes of the first episode and I was like, I'm out. I mean, it, it was that bad. If I didn't and, review it, I would have dropped out after, I think, uh, one and a half episodes. I was like, I'm so done with this now. It just, um, I, I still question why it was even done. Like, what, what did they think? What did they think they, they were going to gain it. out of that? They're fixing it for a current day audience. Didn't yep. you know they were improving? They were improving on it. It was so improved the, that they canceled it. Yeah. After that, that happened on one of, like, one of these open bars, like we were in the middle of doing it, and it's like it started coming through on the chat. It's like, oh shit, they've cancelled Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh well, what can you do? Eh? I think I, uh, I think I was the person who would have the privilege of sharing that news. Yeah, um, and it's you know the 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 way I took it when I did my video about it was like the the reason the original Cowboy Bebop was successful is because it wasn't made by western writers uh, yeah you know it, it wasn't constrained by all the the stupid rules that they have and it wasn't trying to push an agenda it was just there to have fun didn't take itself too seriously uh and that that's what made it good that's what makes most anime and manga good that's why it's outselling the u.s comic book industry to like 10 to 1 oh yeah for sure it, it, that's the thing i, I don't understand why they need to go and adapt anything that's animated because there's a lot of things you could obviously do in animation that you can't do in live action. And it, some of the stuff, it doesn't translate. It, as, as much as I love Ed as a character, it's like I did not see her translating well to live action I mean, because it, at that point, it just becomes cringe. But I think as well, like, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but like with, with Faye, for example, they, they changed her entire personality yeah because in the the anime that i've been watching like she's she's very like you know she just goes in (laughs) well she just yeah there's that as well but like she she goes in guns blazing she doesn't really think things through and and she fucks up a lot of the time and she kind of has to rely on guile and resourcefulness and dare i say it her own sexuality to get her out of situations yeah i mean she's Uh, she's a classic femme patel and and that's kind of the you know the appeal i mean she's hot (laughs) crazy and you know, at, at, at times she can, you know, generally care about somebody, which you see later on in the, in the series. But yeah, I mean, that, you're right. She's kind of like a, she's a loose cannon. Yeah. And she certainly doesn't have all the answers. Like there's plenty of times where she's she's kind of screwed up and she needs to be bailed out. Yeah. Um, or she, she gets herself out of it. But like her initial plan totally doesn't go. Yeah. Like according to plan, like it doesn't work out the way she thought. Um but that's that's who she is. She just like throws herself into things. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're, with that introduction to her in the original series it is great, where she walks into the cigarettes or excuse me, the cigar store, and um, you know the guy is kind of flirting with her, and then she whips out the gun as the uh, you know bad guys start yeah. filing in, and she's just blowing them away. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's that's Faye. That's the character. She's yeah. half cocked. I mean, yeah. there's times when, she, oh, like, she escapes and then she, or her ship runs out of fuel and she needs, yeah. like, she needs to be bailed out, you know? <laughs> like, the, the, again, she doesn't think things through. She just does it. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this one actually brought something to mind. Um, I know this is unrelated, or it's kind of related to Lord of the Rings. Like, I don't know if you guys saw it on Twitter today, but it's, like, the, the J.R.R. Tolkien Society, like, Twitter <laughs> account. Like, some guy just wished Tolkien a happy birthday and put a picture up of him. And so their mis- their response was like, "Do you have permission to use that mm. picture?" And no. they just got absolutely fucking demolished because of it. Um, 
and they've ended up like protecting their account and like basically shutting down. Uh, oh well, that's, that's yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> Just assholes, like really are. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love uh, it. Local white man. Apologize for some people's slur. <laughs> Death Watch disbanded <clears throat> for colonial connections. <laughs> oh, but that, that's accurate. That's accurate. Uh, Surprised Disney haven't some. had headlines like that. How, how excited are you for the Obi Wan Kenobi series? How, how much do you think it's going to butcher him? It's going to absolutely destroy everything. It's going to be more everything. of the same. Like you said, it's basically it's a formula, and they're just going to crank it out. We're going to be on another desert planet, Tatooine, with um with this character, and it's it's oh no 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 we're no. gonna we're gonna jet off to um to what's the jiggy uh, Leia's planet, a Andor Andor. No, oh, she's from um, Alderaan. Alderaan. Alderaan thank uh, you. So yeah, so uh, apparently, apparently, the plot is that he goes off to do stuff with Leia. Are you, are you, what? Are you serious? Yeah, that's the that's See, the, the rumor. The rumor is he actually yeah he he goes off and he's he he does some stuff with Leia and and Anakin's back. <laughs> Apparently, but, back, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I heard. The, this is this is the thing that worries me the most, right? Because Disney have at least been smart enough to leave Darth Vader alone for the most part. Um, and now we're, we're talking about bringing him into this fucking TV show of all things. Man, this just this has got like disaster written all over it. Hey, uh, mm. why couldn't Darth Vader find Princess Leia? He, he was looking in, in all the wrong places. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> See what he did there. Yeah. I wish I didn't. <laughs> I wish I was dead. <laughs> yeah, any uh, hope I, we ever I, have I, for any of these shows, we end up getting punished. So, I'm just happy I lived long enough to watch everything I cared about burn to the ground. <laughs> well, yeah, I, 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 mean, think we're, I think we're pretty right much... Is, it's just a formula. It's, this is all it is now. So don't expect anything clever. Don't expect anything different. Uh, it's just going to be a standard thing where Obi Wan's probably going to get dragged around by some woman. Well, he's going to have inappropriate humor to to break that tension, uh, and it's just going to be so standard fare. Yeah, I, I think you guys are right when you said it's basically it's fast food uh, because it's basically cheap and it gives you diarrhea. Pretty much <clears throat> makes me want to vomit afterward. Thing. Have we? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Have we reached rock bottom now in terms of pop culture? Have we reached the like, point where everything has been pretty much taken care of now and ruined? And now, uh, well, a lot of people would know. I, I think like, we can go lower. Yeah, I think we can go lower. Because like, the thing is, these shows, like, they look pretty good and they have, like, production values are pretty good, but, like, they're all kind of the same and nothing is special. And it's like, wow, that's actually an interesting kind of rock bottom, isn't it? It's like it's mediocrity right. rather than disaster. Because they it's were all about farming IP and making it as safe as possible. <sighs> so yeah. are we now, yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than being in hell, are we in purgatory? Yeah, I I, w I would say we're in mediocrity. Is what we're at. We we've reached. I, I wouldn't say peak mediocrity, but I, I think that's kind of the goal at this point. And that that's kind of my issue with the show, is that why why do people just enjoy and defend mediocrity? I mean, you see it all over entertainment. It's not just with um, with Disney; it's with a lot of different IPs. I so, I don't um, know if it's a combination of like, I don't know. I I people who just love the IP so much that they will just support anything new that comes out for it, or people who I don't know are, are in the younger generation who didn't experience these these things when they were in their prime and so they don't really have that that frame of reference for it maybe they just don't understand what good entertainment is i mean because they've been denied it essentially and anything that comes off as mediocre is fantastic yeah, I, yeah. Wonder, I wonder if it's a generational yeah, thing those marvel shows people fucking eat them up and it's it's like um they've cracked this formula that's literally murdered experimentation and creativity like yeah. they're just dead 
Because, man, I'd go for some really bad shows that were kind of crazy. It's like, oh, they, they put some money into this insane idea and it just didn't work. But at least, you know, it was something. All these shows are, like, designed to make at least X amount of money. And they usually do. I, I think this is why I keep wanting to like The Witcher. Because it's got that element to it where it's like the people who make it are fucking retards. But, like, they, they're they're trying to do a good job. Like they're trying to adapt this material and they're trying to tell a story, they just they lack the actual ability to do it. Whereas it's it's well, you know, they're trying to do like, it in the most intersectional way possible. It, yeah, definitely. Um, but even then, there's there's I guess there's something going on. Whereas like you've got the blandness of something like Boba Fett or or any of the Marvel TV shows. They are they're slick and they're inoffensive and they're just coming off that assembly line and there's no real you know soul in them and i think that's oh, no. that's probably the difference uh well they took all the sexy out of witcher season two as well all the sex yeah. is gone there was they no did the exact same thing with uh, it's, it's uh, um, with alter carbon they took out they took out the cyberpunk and everything the drugs the sex everything that was that made that show great the first season was great stuff. oh i love it so much yeah I, I <laughs> the first season was great. I feel like I never fully understood what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> but like, maybe that's because I was watching it late at night and I'd had a few too many before I, I did it. <laughs> but like, it was it was weird. It was like I'm I'm enjoying it, but I don't quite know what I'm enjoying. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, hey, good news! Oh, wow! You're never gonna believe this. But that try us. We just got a. A trailer drop for Obi Wan right now. I'll link. Ooh, I'll link that. Can we watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting... yeah, yeah. Disney, Disney. Disney. Oh, this will be fine. Disney's right. fine. So, shall I just watch it all the way through, and we can just yeah, give our thoughts yeah, at the end? Yeah. All just, right. Just, well, yeah. Strap in, motherfuckers. Let's let's do this thing. Let's have a, let's have a go. Oh, go ahead. There we go. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Why have they not composited the lightsaber bit into it? I've oh, seen yeah. better versions of this. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> come on, come in. Didn't he like come in, lad. He ended up suing the people who released this video, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah, and he won, I'm pretty sure. Won. I'm not even going to stop this. I want to watch this all the way through. <laughs> Dude's got moves. <laughs> <laughs> he would fuck you up. I would, I would not fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it looks like he's gonna fall over. <laughs> Those little leg movements are great. <laughs> Man, it's one of the earliest memes. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> We all know this is what I do on my own in my house. <laughs> That's what all of us should do. We gotta prepare. The oh wow. <laughs> 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 At times I think he's tap dancing. It's like it goes into like really oh. aggressive dancing. Oh shit. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's just uh, yeah. I, I like how he keeps walking out of frame. Like he re he has to like focus his mind again and, and get himself <laughs> psyched up for the next round. He's got to yeah. he's got to recharge his force. He does. Yeah, I, I I'm sure. Yeah, that that guy did. Um, he had a lot of problems after this, didn't he? Because he got he just obviously got bullied relentlessly for this shit yeah, when it came yeah. out um but i'm pretty sure like i said he got a bunch of money from suing the people who released the video i don't know if that how it makes you feel about the story but like, he got it he got his you know he got he got his because that is not a video you'd want released you know 
Uh, okay. <laughs> the chat just said that was out. <laughs> it could be yeah. worse as far as videos being released. So I mean, yeah, you could have gone the other direction, but like, yeah, that was me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> here's some here's some footage of me as a kid. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I've I've seen versions where they've like they've composited like lightsaber. You know, get yeah, little blasters, blades into it, and they, like they've they've green screened the background so it's like on Mustafar and stuff. So I'm <laughs> given the like the jewel of the fates music, so like it properly becomes epic. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> he's the guy. Well, at least he's not Jack Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was going with it. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't know what he'd do with that lightsaber. <laughs> it's going to be painful. Yeah. Um, so, someone back there, though, they did reference that Cobra Kai has, has been doing well. And I, damn, man, I, I will hold that up as a shining beacon of hope in this relentless sea of despair and like mediocrity that we have today. It's oh my God, doing absolutely. pretty well. I, uh, I managed to catch like the first three episodes and I mean, they were fantastic. And e even though like, you know, the, the two leads are basically older, much like uh, with Boba Fett, but their fight scenes are just really well done. And, and seeing Daniel beat the shit out of the hockey team. I mean, that was that was a fantastic fight scene. It's it's great. Yeah. And it's just um, like, I don't know. Had you seen the previous seasons and you were just now? No, getting into no, I, have. I, I saw like half of season one. It's definitely a show. I just need to make time and sit down and watch. Uh, because they, they've just done such a fantastic job with what I've seen. I, I would thoroughly recommend, like, yeah, getting through it all. Because, like, the, the especially the first season, I think the episodes are only about 25 minutes each. Like, they're not long. Um, but, like, I just, I, I can't speak highly enough of it. If you're going to bring back some old franchise or whatever and take it in new directions but stay true to the spirit of it, that is the benchmark for how you do it. Oh, yeah, for they, sure. They nailed it with this one. Um, it's funny. It's it's heartwarming at, at times. Um, it's got moments of real drama in it. Like they just they they got everything, and you know they they know just when to poke fun at the original movies, but then keep it serious enough that you can stay invested in what's happening now. Like the oh god, yeah. <laughs> the, the writers of this show they need to be doing other stuff. Like they when do. this eventually ends, they need to move on to other things. In 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 TV and, and movies. Well, I love how they brought back the guy from like the worst one. Was it Credit Kid 3? Yeah. The, the guy mm -hmm. with the ponytail. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. like the, they even referenced some of that stuff. And I was like, oh my God. It's like, it, and it's it's done so well. And that, that's the yeah. thing that's great about it, where, you know, Boba Fett fails. This, you know, you know, Cobra Kai it exceeds expectations, excuse me, exceeds expectations. But they, they, they're able to go into so much more depth with the characters. Like, because, oh, you yeah. know, I guess a lot of them from the movies were just cardboard cutouts, really. Like, mm -hmm. Kreese was just your generic bad guy who just likes beating people up. Right. And then you get him now, and it's like, well, you, you find out, like, you find out his whole past in, in Vietnam and, like, how he was bullied as a kid. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, you understand his his perspective on the world. Like you say, that, that guy with the ponytail who was just the most cackling pantomime villain in the third <laughs> movie, you know, yeah. suddenly it's like, yeah, he's, he's like almost apologizing for the shit he did back then. He's like, yeah, I was hyped up on Coke. It was the eighties. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was, I was terrorizing a teenager over a karate tournament. What the fuck was that even all about? I, I, <laughs> like, I love that. That was great. But then there's a core of like meaning to like all of that stuff. You find out that they, they formed that, that whole, dojo of karate because they wanted to um i guess instill discipline into the next generation of kids like the you know the, the kind of stuff that was lost after they came back from vietnam like it's all you know it sounds kind of silly as i'm describing it but like it's framed in, in quite a serious way in the show and it the way it does it is that no character is strictly right or wrong all of them just have different perspectives mm -hmm. and you can, you can kind of see merit in every single one of them. And again, that's, that's a good, that's a real hallmark of balanced writing there that you can balance out all these different, you know, quite outlandish characters to make them seem believable and reasonable. Well, the, the thing I, I like about the series, they, they took a, you know, generic villain boy, Johnny, and actually you know, gave depth to his character with the series, paying respect to the original movies and then showing, well, yeah, okay, Johnny's an asshole, but you know, he's still a human being. And, and you basically yeah. that karate tournament, you know, quote unquote ruined his life to a degree. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's like your typical 
you know, high school jock who was popular mm-hmm. back then and, and kind of high school. Yeah, like he peaked early and kind of burned out after that, and now he's just a bum when you when you reconnect with him. Um, and he, you know, he's a drunkard. He's he doesn't really have a job, and is uh, you know he got divorced and stuff. He's estranged from his son. All that stuff. He's a failure in life, but then he builds himself back up again slowly. Um, and you you really cheer him on because when you see the the shit that he has to try and struggle through, um, you absolutely empathize with him. Um, yeah, and he, he just uh, Johnny's just like the MVP of that show because it's like he got teleported out of the 1980s and like he just plonked into the present day. You know, he doesn't understand <laughs> yeah. modern culture. He he still like talks about wanting to bang rad babes, but you know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. Um, the the show absolutely takes the piss out of like um, you know social justice and and feminism and and um basically everything that we we kind of have to deal with today the show just makes fun of that like without without hesitation yeah. and it it's does just a great glorious. job of doing it it really does yeah um yeah for all of those reasons like i i just yeah i think it's it's one of those few shows that's really nailed it it's it's found the way to bring something back um but like, give it real heart and soul and and it, and fun, which is all the stuff that's just missing from things like the the Marvel and the the Disney shows. Yeah, that that's a I think a key thing with entertainment these days is it, the the fun has been kind of vacuumed out of everything. Yeah, well, I like fun. <clears throat> yeah, I like yeah. Fun it's fun. I, yeah, it's a controversial take, but I like fun as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to get canceled. Yeah, but yeah. Remember, we're in a, an age of edutainment. <sighs> that's well, that's this, where we are now. Yeah, yeah, it's about the message. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the you know, when message. we've done, yeah, when we've done like these happy hour streams where we've, we've talked about movies like Predator or Commando or whatever, or you know, the Terminator movies, um, you know, Beverly Hills we, Cop, Beverly Hills Cop, yeah, like movies that were just fun. Um, and and just great stuff and I don't know man like there's very few from nowadays that I can think of that, that we could ever talk about in future and think yeah god damn they, they really had fun with that one yep there's, there's not a lot of shows you can really point to no they're becoming <clears throat> few and far between I mean I'm um spending a lot of my time at the moment watching Korean TV because that seems to be uh, a place that is producing some interesting ideas. Uh, You know, I've watched Squid Game to Hellbound to The Silent Sea from Korea, all of them with very different uh, themes uh, and and, uh, concepts, all of them really, really good. Uh, Alice in Borderland from Japan, which was fantastic. Uh, as as well, um, is um is Hellbound any good? Oh, it's great. Because I, I saw it advertised on Netflix, I never really got around to watching it, but I like the premise of it. Well, the premise curiosity. is really good, and it it really I can't say too much because stuff happens in it, but it uh, it ain't. <laughs> it's not Wars, what you think happens. it's going to be. It's not what you think it's going to be. It subverts you in a very good way. Okay. Um. Out of curiosity, out of the, the lot you just mentioned, which is which do you think is the best? Out of them? Uh I mean I think I mean I think Squid Game was absolutely unbelievable. Um yeah. I thought that was incredible. Uh I just saw the silent sea and the silent again, the silent sea wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. Um and turned out to be a very interesting kind of study about people. Um and uh and Hellbound has got some crazy stuff in it and I, and hellbound has the um just the greatest ending to the season that you're like fucking bring me season two right now it's uh, it's just got a, such a great ending um to, to that first season but yeah squid game was just i mean that's my standout show of last year uh what are your Fine, thoughts on them doing a season two? Uh-huh. I know. 
I think that's a premise called. that only sustains one season, personally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of good stories I think that can be told with one season, and that's fine. And unfortunately, because of the popularity and success, they they continue it on, and they end up I think killing the IP because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I think there was certain aspects, like a Squid Game, as awesome as it was, there was episodes that, that properly had me gripped. Um, the, the finale was a bit clumsy. Um, the inclusion of the, the cop undercover in the, the, the sort of Squid Game um, mm-hmm. behind the scenes was a little bit weird, and it just felt like it was tacked on, which it kind of was in retrospect. Um, and I just I don't want to see them ruin it now by trying to do a season two, because I don't really know where you can go with this to keep it fresh and interesting i have no idea well mm. we'll all give it a shot we may I, I will, I will <laughs> give it a try um yeah there was there was one i just get a uh, super chat that came in here actually for a hundred dollars god thanks man Boom. uh from fishbowl uh cheers the message is the reason that shows are shit uh run hide flight is a movie i was wondering what your all thoughts on your friend from nyc um now i haven't seen that have, have you guys seen run hide nope. and fight i have no, no is that the statham film no, no that, this that is this is daily wire yeah the daily wire is like when they started oh. producing movies this was like the first one i, no, I heard they did a decent it. job but besides that uh, i i don't know much about it hmm. because I i'm uh i mean i'm fully in favor of them producing movies like this because you know, I think we'd, we'd probably all agree that like, when it comes to Hollywood films, they all swing in one direction, and it's it's good to get a counterpoint to that, and you're not going to get that from mainstream Hollywood studios, so no. you kind of need stuff like this. Um, I just haven't got around to seeing it, and I feel bad, actually, um, because I yeah. think yeah, I've heard good trend. things about it from other people. Um but yeah, I'll need to, oh, I'll need to give that uh, a look. Sorry, there was another Korean uh, series I watched as well, My Name. <clears throat> My Name, which is uh, uh, follows a female uh, police officer. And that's excellent. That's how you write women, you know, write a strong woman, inverted commas. Uh, that's another great, great series if you want to check that out too. Okay. I mean, that... Uh, when you're saying that there, that's one of the reasons I liked Arcane, because you had a couple of very strong female characters that were interesting, oh, yeah. but deeply flawed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of them. and that's the yeah, best this, part. This, this character, there's lots of flaws with this character. She's got a strength, she's got a weaknesses, and it, and it understands and appreciates that. Uh, and yeah, my name was gripping stuff. It was a really good thriller. Really good thriller. Uh, have you guys any of you seen Castlevania? Because people ask me about that sometimes. No, I haven't. Uh, uh, two seasons are apparently very good, but then it falls off. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I've heard people saying it's pretty good and it's worth watching. Um, but yeah, I've not, I've not seen it myself. I was hoping one of you guys might have seen it. Um, all right, cool. Well, what I was going to do is maybe go through a couple of super chats because I know they've been piling up here. Um, are you guys all right to, to do a few? Yeah, yeah. yeah go for it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a few, and then I will. I will have to head to Bedfordshire quite soon. <laughs> no, yeah, no problem. A bit, but I'm I'm good for now. Okay, cool. I've, I've been uh, up for 24 hours as we uh, at the moment. Oh, get some sleep, as you got. <laughs> you got to pump those numbers up. Those are rookie yeah, numbers. Yeah, those are rookie numbers, boy. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll, I'll start here. So the Uber Geek said, uh, "May God stand between you and harm in all the empty spaces you walk." I say this for the anniversary of 9/11. Uh, 7-7, World Wars, Falklands, Iraq, Afghanistan, and other Remembrance Days. Nothing of significance happened today. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> this time last year, I tell you what, something really significant did happen, so you're wrong. I was taking a dump, right? And I thought I'd finished, <laughs> and I flushed and everything. Then I realized there was more to come, and I had to sit back down and go, oh, oh, yeah. hey, when that happens. Hey, we've all been there. With, I, I was recently I was traumatized. there, dude. Recently there, only a few days ago. I uh, yeah, I did a wipe, and then uh, I I I started to pull, up, and then my body was just like, oh no 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 no. There's more to come, buddy. No no no, <laughs> and it was just like the second coming of Christ. I fell into a burning ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
and the fireman's hose activated. <laughs> Flying the Japanese flag. Um, Mark Gilbert says, "Hi, my name is uh, Mark. I like your vids, but I can't hear you talk louder, please." Uh, okay, I will do my best. Um, this <laughs> Mark, interestingly, Mark, I, I got a I got a life hack for you. There's a volume button. <laughs> also, this this comment came in before the the stream even started. So yeah, okay. And you can get the extension. It's called, uh, I think it's literally just like volume up extensions. Don't worry, there's, there's ways. There are ways. There's ways and means. Um, Stybeck B said, any chance to start a discussion about Warhammer 40k just to spite drinker? For example, <laughs> Ma Magnus did nothing wrong. Or Event Horizon <laughs> is set in the Warhammer 40k timeline. <laughs> oh no, we're going to have a Primark discussion. Uh, I'll, do you, I'll do you one better. Horus did nothing wrong. <laughs> I agree. I actually agree. <laughs> Horace did nothing wrong. The Emperor's a poopy pants. It's just uh, misunderstood, man. He's misunderstood. I'm not, I, I don't know all the, the 40k fluff, so it, some of this is lost on me. Yeah. <laughs> I love the game. Dude, you gotta do better, drinker. You gotta step up. <laughs> some, no. guy. some guy. <laughs> <laughs> some angry guy. Uh, but yeah, I will fully entertain the idea that Event Horizon is in the 40k universe, and that is what happens when you go into warp space without a Geller field. Yep. God damn it. Yeah. Silly fools. <laughs> Liberate your ass on that one. Also, it wasn't some guy. It was Captain some guy. Captain right? some guy. Captain Falcon. There we yeah. go. <laughs> Captain Black Falcon. I, f I refuse to call him Captain America. I will die on this hill. I will never call him Captain America. Well, if that's he the he's comics, not, he's not. Call him Falcon Cap. Dude, he stole the shield. It wasn't his. He stole it, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. When he got uh, given it, then he gave it up, then he stole it. Yeah. I, I will. Uh, I'll endorse uh, John Walker before before him. Hell yeah! Fuck yeah! John John he Walker did nothing wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't. That was the hilarious thing about the show. I can just imagine fucking Horace and John Walker just sitting together like over a quiet drink. Like, oh, why are we mis so misunderstood? <laughs> yeah. yeah, throw the Don in there as well. Jeez. I just <laughs> wanted my father to listen to me and he just refused. <laughs> Makes me war master. What the fuck kind of honor is that? Yeah. And, uh, Unhinged says, it's a new year just in time for the new Star Trek Discovery. Gotta collect them all. <laughs> We're all oh, just I'm looking, I'm looking the Picard. <laughs> the, the, was it, the what culture Star what, Star Trek channel said that they're, st they're stopping doing reviews of Star Trek Prodigy because nobody watches them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy as well about all this? You combine all the Star Trek, Star Wars, Marvel, but all this. It's like we can barely keep up. As as a collective, it's like, as did you watch that one? It's like, no. And you're like, no. fuck. Who did? Did somebody yeah. watch this one? <laughs> Gary, this probably. is the thing. You guys are like my benchmark. Like, it's like, oh, if I haven't seen it, well, fucking Mauler or As is gonna have seen it for sure. And then even you guys are like, no, nah, it's not a time. <laughs> too, bit, too many. There is, there's just too, yeah, there's just so. And I need to, I need to palate cleanse now. I like, I've, I've got so much TV cancer. That I just I need to go I need to take some remission pills by some you know by going and watching some good TV a bit of Korean therapy yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, like, I, like Daredevil season one I've literally just finished watching it again yesterday because uh, I just I needed I needed to watch some good well written superhero but grounded with great characters uh, and just you know just marveling at Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin just ah. Oh. But now he's a joke in Hawkeye. What? You get to yeah. see him reprise his role. It'll be great. Go watch it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just after Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield as well. It's like, yeah, back to normal. You know, that was just a little. Oh. That was our no. little glimmer. Yep. A little bit. Yeah, I, I got like, crushed. I got Arcane and I got. Um, no way home. Like within the same week, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm fucking walking on air here." And then, <laughs> yeah, along came Matrix Four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just uh, just took a big old dump like, on me. We're gonna subvert their expectations with this one. 
they <laughs> tricked their audience a little bit too with the thumbnail. They they had oh, like big time. They were like, oh, we thought it was a fail. And you listen to it, you're like, oh, okay. Maybe they're did, troll jobbing the troll job. Did you did you listen to that video, Drinker? Which one was this, sorry? The Red Letter Media one on uh, Matrix. Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's like the most check it out. cynical video there is. There is. Are they, um, well, is it is it like more cynical than the Ghostbusters Afterlife one? Because man, oh, they tore that yeah, movie oh, a new big one. Big time, big time, big yeah, time. Honestly, dude, I, I like I just describe it as bizarre. It was a bizarre video to listen to. Is it you one of those it. ones where like one of them clearly hasn't watched the movie and they're just trying to bluff their way through? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, felt, it, it, it felt like they didn't want to make it. It felt like they don't like their audience. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it felt like they were part of the, uh, the 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 kind of Hollywood machine with the way that they uh, sort of relished um, uh, the way that the uh, the the sheeple, as they refer referred to, um, just uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Consume media, um, and then when when. At one point, I think Mike asked Jay if he's seen the new Spider-Man. He was just like, no. Well, it yeah, makes they... me wonder if they're parroting what the movie was doing. It, no, it, it, it... no, I don't know. Oh, I, no, I haven't seen it, so no, I'm not, not going to try and defend it. But that's what's go to that level. Me. I don't think that. I think that was their genuine opinions. And yeah, they the Jay compares uh, No Way Home negatively to Matrix. Like that's what the fans really want and they get it delivered and then mike was like oh have you seen it and he was like no <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like oh damn okay what, what is their justification for being grumpy about any of this like literally their show is like they sit on a fucking chair like literally what we're doing right now and just <laughs> bullshit about the movie and then some professional editor cuts it together into something coherent like it, it's like the easiest job in the world that they've got with all of this like yeah it's it's bizarre for me. Like maybe they've just I, been doing it too long. I don't know. I'd be interested in what you think if you check it out. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it's a very strange video to watch. Oh uh, yeah, I, I will take a look. I, I try to. I do try to get back into Red Letter Media, but man, I just feel like I keep getting pushed away. <laughs> Dude, be best of the worst is way better than Half in the Bag. I'm saying it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I always um, like their sketches that they do for half in a bag, though. I always thought those were funny. Uh, I, I struggle with that. I like, struggle with them as well. <laughs> I, I tend to just skip past them in the intro because I'm like, yeah, you're you're doing it in the style of like we're we're gonna make it really stiff and awkward, like we know it's shit and we're just winging it or whatever. And man, they barely yeah, do just... them anymore, though. I know. Well, it, it's weird because when stories. they did. When they did their Ghostbusters Afterlife one, they were like, "Oh yeah, we're we're not in character here. We're just gonna like talk about it." It's like, what, what character? Like, you never <laughs> play characters anymore. <laughs> you mean you're your show is just like you guys just talking about them? shit? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird one to watch. It'd be interesting to see what you think. <laughs> All right. Um, Skippy Savage said, Hey Drinker, please review both parts of the Batman Telltale games. Best version of Batman I've seen in any platform yet. Um, I do, like, I've played a few of the Telltale games, like the Game of Thrones ones and the, the Walking Dead ones, and I thought they were pretty good. I've never done the Bat one, the Batman one, though. Yeah, they just you guys died, didn't they? As a studio, Telltale. Yeah, they, just they went out of business. Uh, they went out of business, yeah. They just, um, they took on too much and they couldn't couldn't handle well, the batman game was the last one the yeah though two wasn't the two batman games yeah uh, yeah part one and two they're saying here <laughs> um yeah i haven't played them i, I enjoyed <clears throat> some of their other stuff um i suspect they don't hold up very well for repeat playthroughs and then you start to realize like yeah there's not so much variation in the plot as you think um but yeah i like them i like them for what they are um Thorin Parbs says, um, Hail Drinker and Mower, did you ever watch the series Black Sails on Stars? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think Zach McGowan uh, would make a good Wolverine or Geralt? I never saw it, but I've been recommended it a couple times. Yeah, um, I'm in the same boat. I don't know if you, as or, or comics, if you've seen it. See, Black Sails, uh, yeah. I haven't, no. It's that um, 
uh, piratey one, isn't it? I, yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about it, though. Mm. Okay. Um, RRTNZ says, Hail Drinker, you legend. Um, Shumei Mahler. Just to add uh, to your long list, uh, any plans for a future Drinker Top 5s? Have a th uh, shot on me, mate. Um, yeah, I'm done a Top 5 in ages, actually. There, there's plenty of other things I can do. I've done... Um, top five last stands in movies um, and top five lightsaber fights mm. uh, yeah there's a there's a few more i could do um, maybe a uh, top five explosions <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's actually a good that's actually a good idea dude uh top five most manly moments like all five of them would be all five of them would be from predator like <laughs> yeah. commando where he's just stood there holding the yeah <laughs> I love that movie. Everyone's just like twizzling around doing. Yeah. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger just ascending to godhood in that moment. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's, oh, God, that was just the best moment. I, in I love the saw blade to the head. That was a great, that was a yeah. great kill. Yeah. yeah. It's just like when he throws a steam pipe through Bennett. <laughs> Let off some steam. Let off some Bennett. steam. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> I don't need the knife. I don't need the knife to beat you, John. Yeah. I don't need the knife! I don't kill you! <laughs> did you see it recently? Like, Midnight's Edge, they had uh, Vernon Wells on. They were interviewing him. I, I wish I'd been there just so... All my questions would have been about Commando. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one. Did it hurt when Arnold threw that pipe through you? <laughs> How did you survive the boat exploding at the start of the film? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever think I need to like get in shape if I'm going to be fighting opposite Arnold now? <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> Was the string vest your idea or the studio? Farewell, Thunderchild said, uh, Did my package reach you okay, mate? If not, balls. Uh, <laughs> I haven't received any packages yet. No letter bombs or anything, so um, <laughs> not yet. Um, I, I shit you not. I had a fucking text from UPS today saying, hey, uh, we've got a parcel here for you at our depot that uh, we haven't delivered. Do you still want it? <laughs> oh, no, um, you send it back. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, no it's, no, it's all good. It's all good. Just burn it. Of course, fucking send it to me, you dickheads. Well, you're going to be in tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be fucking in tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't need the gun. I don't need uh, the uh, Yeah, here we go. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm going to kill you now. I think my, you know what? I, I'm going to say it. One of my top moments in all of 80s cinema is when Bennett gets punched into a fucking electricity generator and it makes him stronger. <laughs> makes him stronger. <laughs> <laughs> he becomes a better fighter after that. He's like, yeah! <laughs> oh, John, I feel good. <laughs> it's the steam that got him. <laughs> you had to let it off. And we had, yeah, here we we had go. Alyssa Milano in her least crazy in life. Yeah. Oh man, there's so much there's so much toxic masculinity in that movie. I don't know how she even survived it. I think she must be traumatized to this day. Probably. Oh, I, think, I think yeah, I think Mark Bentley's got a point. What's gone wrong? Yeah. <laughs> that entertainment sucks, so man, much. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Uh People so just want some escapism. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as for that that question, um, yeah, like I gave you the address, I think, from my my literary agent, so they should forward it to me. So sometimes they can be, I guess, like over the Christmas period. The whole publishing industry just says fuck off for like you know a month or so. Um, so it's probably that that's delayed it. Um, Ken Woolard says January sixth is my birthday, so I have to remember this bullshit every year now. <laughs> 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 sorry man happy birthday to you though i hope you have a good day anyway uh botep hey drinker if you enjoy unpretentious action movies you should check out lockout with uh, guy pierce it's simple hilar hilarious and pierce shines oh yeah that's um, a great movie yeah uh lockout 
I haven't seen that actually. Yeah, I'll need to give that a look. Uh, Winky Wanky Woo says, We love As and Mauler. Well, we Yay. all do, of course. Love you too, Winky Wanky Woo. Yeah, yeah a bit of Winky. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just, he comes into the streams all the time. He's great. Chucks <laughs> uh, and Housen, uh, Happy New Year. It was an honor talking to you on Patreon the other day, and I can't wait for your happy hour on Cobra Kai going to do it um i want to get to the end of season uh four and then i'll do it uh no spoilers but you will love the boys winner to the all valley tournament yes bring it on man uh scottish nerd says a scotsman a welshman and an englishman walk into an open bar happy new year gents here we go again (laughs) oh my (laughs) god yeah we're nearly in the british isles here aren't we oh we've we've said this before we need a token irishman yeah Yeah. to round it out I've said, yeah, if anyone can get me Dave Cullen, bring him in, because <laughs> bring me the head of Dave Cullen now. <laughs> Literally a diversity hire at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just here to be Irish. That's no, I'm, we're all well, if, if, if it Irish, they better, they I have some Irish calling. heritage, so maybe that counts. I don't know. Yeah, that's good enough. Um but yeah, no. But if, like for Dave, like uh, he he's reviewed loads of like Star Trek Picard and, oh, and yeah. all those like other things. So like it'd be, you know, he and I like I guess have got a lot of similar views on a lot of this stuff. So it'd be great to bring him in at some point. Um, yeah, just need to I need to make him aware. Um, and then maybe we'll do that thing that we discussed. When... Yeah. When are we When are we going to go running down the beach as in slow motion? Uh, <laughs> um... You said we were going to do that as well. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I just can't time. wait to to start hugging you while we jump in the water. That's what I, I'm gonna. Wow. I, I need to find a crop top. I don't think they, they sell them for men very often. <laughs> that is well, just that is one of my one, favorite yeah. fucking jokes in scary movie, where he's, <laughs> where he's at school and he's wearing a crop top, and he says, "Just when he says, does this make me look gay?" This one goes, <laughs> this one goes, nah, and then he like lifts it up. There he goes. Does it make me look gay now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wants to look gay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then at Does the he end not? He goes, his mate goes, I don't even notice. But it says, it says, it says gay. And he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but Wait. you let me, he, he said, but you let me suck your, well, you were sucking my, I. <laughs> <laughs> Is he not getting it on with his girlfriend and he dresses her up in like all the American football gear? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's just got like Randy and then he ends up going, come on, Brandon. I think it's called Brandon. It's like, come on, Brandon. It's like, Brandon, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, Brandy, come on. That's so good. That's a funny film. The first scary movie is a fucking funny film. Man, I, I, last oh, time I really saw good. that was in the theater. It, I've completely <laughs> forgotten it. <laughs> There, again, there's so much shit in that that would never get made nowadays. Oh, God, no. Doing ghost face. face <laughs> He's story face. through pubes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was... I just the bit where he where he comes and he's yeah, like, he oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> it sprays her onto the ceiling. <laughs> The dick through the guy's head through the glory hole. You know that? <laughs> oh yeah. I, I almost wonder how they filmed that actually when she gets sprayed up into the ceiling. They go look at it again. That shit. I just love how he deflates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when she's chased up the stairs by Ghostface and she throws her grandma at him? <laughs> yeah, he, he, he just pulls he pulls it down the stairs. To... <laughs> is there is there not a bit where he stabs her right in the tit and like it pulls the knife out and it's just got the silicone implant yeah. like jiggling <laughs> on the end of the knife and he and he goes. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. Uh, sadly, never made. Ever yeah, I remember again. when we were allowed to have fun. <laughs> I know. Oh, those movies, I miss man. fun. Um, that film is transphobic. It's uh, bigoted. Oh, it's, it's homophobic. Uh, and okay. it's Here, here's a, here's a question for this is addressed to me, but it's really uh, out to everyone. So from Ransom G, he said, "Hail Drinker, uh, when are we getting the Drinker fixes for Batwoman? Is it even possible?" No, <laughs> I, I'm going to just throw my hands up and be like, "No, nope, can't fix that show." <laughs> No, that's no one can. Is. That's like asking him to fix the universe. Okay, that's you know, it's, it's difficult. There's lots and to do. The, the thing is, should thing we is, fix it? And should know, we? No, fix it? Normies are not going to know the difference between Batgirl and Batwoman. So when this Batgirl bloody movie comes out, people are just going. Kind of like, anyway, Dude, people in uh, my subreddit were like, "Wait, Brendan Fraser's going to be in Batwoman?" It's like, no, 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 no Batgirl. They're like. 
So which episode he's going to begin? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh... Here we go. I think so, someone's given me the, the ultimate assessment of it. It's just too wank. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that icon, by the way. Yeah. Just too wank. <laughs> uh, next one is... Miranda Sinistra says, "Hey, Hail Mower, when are we going to get the first and nicest critic video?" Oh, it's the thing that we made up on Real BBC, I think. Uh, as this is like the the nicest the really, critic. Yeah, he's just like a super friendly critic who just reviews oh, yeah, everything yeah, positively. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to hurt anyone's <laughs> <Yeah>. feelings. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it was just a really good try. Well, gosh, gosh give him that. It really, just, really was tried so try. hard, and their hearts are really in it. Yeah, and that, that alone is just it is so just a wonderful. ton of enthusiasm. God bless them. God that, bless. That's that's heartwarming, though. You know, I love I love people like that who are just like you know they're trying to find the good in everything, even <laughs> and, even in Batwoman. If that guy was on a stream, we'd be like, "What do you think about you know criticisms from other content creators saying you're you shit and you have no spine?" Doesn't really be like, "Well, they're entitled to their opinion." Yeah, that's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to an opinion, and let's just give them a chance, an opportunity to talk. Uh, uh, somebody's actually got the horse meme correct for the Matrix. I've just shared. I've just shared that. Oh, I there's, think there's oh, one going around that. which isn't correct. This is actually the correct horse meme for the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. That's the right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. That's the one. That's uh, yeah, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the next one here uh, yeah Rainbow Rattle says hey drinker Moller and Az Moller any plans for EFAB to have a cool intro like all the other podcasts you co-host we actually uh, talked about this in the catch up yesterday I was like I was thinking about it but the thing about EFAB's intros are that they're just right in the middle of a conversation every time you go live and you just hear us talking about some topic and you have to figure it out and I was like is that EFAB's intro is that what it is and if it well, is, that, should I change it? I don't think so. Well, you, you know, you're different then. Yeah. You know, yeah. rather than like having a, a scripted intro or, or any kind of video or anything, you just guys launch straight into it mid conversation. Yeah. Talking about cabbages or whatever. <laughs> it's like, that's what you're in for. Get ready. Buckle <laughs> in. Um, Gerald Armstrong says, happy to see Dankula versus Drinker. Well, you know, <laughs> it'd be good if you did. Uh, reminds me of Glasgow versus Edinburgh. Yeah, so Dank basically messaged to say they, they do Dungeons and Dragons at his studio um, on a Thursday night, and it kind of depends on when they finish to whether or not he'd be able to get here in time. Um, and I think he basically ran out of time. Uh, well, that's he, why he wasn't able to He just tweeted out it. a picture of him eating a, a sausage. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> a, battered, what? a battered sausage butty in a chippy. Somewhere. Oh shit, son! Yeah, so and he's obviously not got home Scotland, yet. Scotland, there is a can of iron brew on the yeah. uh, on the table. So oh, I'm just looking at it now. Actually, um, why the fuck would you have a battered sausage in a roll? Even I've never had that before. I, I, that looks that looks good to me. It, it, it does, yeah. But normally, a battered sausage supper on its own is is pretty filling. Like, put some mm. curry sauce on that, and you're good to go. Oh, hell yeah, curry sauce. That's the one. Not mushy. Fuck your mushy peas. Bring me curry Fuck sauce. Your mushy peas. <laughs> Fuck your mushy peas. I Why just, would you I even just, put them in there? Mushy peas, it, they freak me out. I, I just don't get I'm it. Fine with the, I don't they care freak about me mushy out. peas. That's fine. They're, they're just, they're not the sort of thing I would ever have in a chippy. You know? It's just, if I was, it's if I was captured thing. in Afghanistan, you know, okay. trying to trying to rescue the woman and, and get the secrets, and what? and they and all they <laughs> and all they brought get me the secret. <laughs> I'm hacking into the ancient temple. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and they brought me mushy peas. I'd be like, go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourself! You fuck your Bring me a beans. sausage supper, and then we'll talk. <laughs> I want, I want, yeah, butter sausage, slap a sausage, on the table salt and vinegar, like, yeah, uh, curry yeah. sauce, please. <laughs> As I hope you I love this. Every, every American is so damn confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> I understand fish and chips. That's about it. 
I should have joined. It, it, I should have, I should have joined uh, Drinker. I should have become a co-host because then we just have Brit talk. Yeah, it would which be no, yeah, which just... nobody understands. We just get Brit talk going, you know. It would be yeah. pretty British. What are they talking about? Oh, this is just this Brit talk. It was like mushy peas. Like you made that up. You just sat on some peas. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. What the fuck is mushy peas? I mean, it's, 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 that. It's, like... it's the devil's food. Yeah, there we go. With eyes on that, all peas are degenerate little <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Down with peas. Now, hey, look, I like garden <laughs> peas. I love garden peas. Mushy peas, fuck off. It's like every good meal has to has, have a shit ingredient, though. Like you have a turkey dinner on Christmas Day. Some asshole said you got to have Brussels sprouts with it. I love Brussels right. sprouts. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you, as they taste like death to me. Like <laughs> I used to hate, I used to hate Brussels sprouts as a kid. Now I love Brussels sprouts. They're just there, like I don't know. They're like fringilla in in The Witcher. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> they're just there, and you don't want them to be. <laughs> They're baby cabbages. I'll get cancelled for that. <laughs> yeah, they're like concentrated cabbage, and they smell weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like they injected a cabbage with pin particles, and they fucking shrunk it down. So it's like <laughs> the same amount of flavor condensed into a tiny area. That is it. Do you want some Brussels sprouts? No. Do you want some mini cabbages? Oh yes, yeah. please. Yes. <laughs> That was the plan. Oh. <laughs> uh, what's the next one? George says, backtrack to the last unicorn and the last dragon. Uh, mm. Sorry, it's back to back, he says. Last unicorn and the last dragon. Uh, well, there you go. Last unicorn was some movie. It's um, a great movie. Is that the B, uh, Brie Larson one? No, no. The last unicorn, unicorn was story. an animated, animated uh, movie from like the 80s. I watched Spirited yep. Away over Christmas again. 20th anniversary. Dude, the, good movie. the food in that film looks delicious. <laughs> Turns you into a pig. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there, there's, a, there's a Studio Ghibli compilation of just all the food that, mm. they, that they have in all their different movies, like watching it getting cooked and everything. Mm. Um, and it's just, yeah, it, it's great to watch. Um, oh, yeah. Just before we go on, uh, and Comics Division, I think all this talk of food and Brussels sprouts and mushy peas has got you inspired because you're saying you need to you need to I head do. out for some food I right do. now. I have, it's pretty funny because um, this, this um, day has been loaded with stream. I have one at 7 p.m. my time. I need to get food now. If I don't, I'm probably going to die. So They get food Thank now. you so much for having me on, man. This was fantastic. No, it was great for you to come on, mate. Um, appreciate you you taking some time out to do this, and uh, yeah, it's been good to have you. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Um, the the link to Comics Division's channel is in the description, so please give him a subscribe because he, he does great stuff. Um, well, thank and he's, you. He's an all round good guy. So thank you for coming on, mate. Well, thanks again. Take care. Everyone. See you. See you Friday, right. dude. Cheers, bud. All right. Brit talk. Brit talk. Yes. Oh, I think what are you thinking? <laughs> I'll fake your curry sauce, uh, fake your spam fritter. Is, is it true that Welsh people put curry sauce on everything more? You can settle this. Well, I mean, all. there's definitely like, you know, predilection to it. We like curry here quite a bit, but I don't personally. I don't. I show restraint, okay? Hmm. I'm not one of the barbaric Welsh people. Okay. In, in you, Wales you... And, 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 and in England, actually, as you can answer this, because up in Scotland, we have a battered pizza supper. What? I don't know if you get this there, but I you have take a never uh, heard of that. <laughs> that is that is legit a thing up here. So you take like half of a pizza, put it in batter, deep fry it with chips. What? That is the food of the gods right there, my friend. My I've goodness. never even heard of that. Oh yeah, yeah. We and we used to subs and you can live after eating that. I mean I, I, I used to subsist <laughs> on it back in high school. We all did, right? But then I, I had one a few years back. And I, a couple hours later, I was like, "Fucking my arteries are clogging up." <laughs> As I'm sitting here, did you just literally like <laughs> slip out your bum? <laughs> <laughs> no, no force necessary. Just literally, just sat yeah. there, and gravity just did the rest. 
I mean, it's like you could take it, you could take the pizza and tur- and squeeze it, and you could watch the grease just oh! dripping out of it. It's like... Oh, no. <laughs> well, first, you probably did that with the pizza just in general, but... Yeah, some people call it a pizza crunch, apparently. There you go. Oh, what? <laughs> Winky Wanky Woo is going to steer know, us right. With the knowledge. Wow, man. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I remember going out on the lash. You go to the, the takeaway. At the end of the night, you get your burger and chips, or you get... But what was the trick on the chips? Garlic mayonnaise. Yeah. Garlic I get you. mayonnaise. We That's we used to get one. cheese. Well, we used to get cheese and chili sauce up here. That was a popular <laughs> one. But yeah, garlic mayo was was a winner too. Yeah. I'm I'm just Break taking off! a walk. I'm just taking a moment to like picture yeah. it. <laughs> it's like I really want to get a takeaway now. <laughs> Yeah. What if there's any open right now? <laughs> it's this, Britain. Uh, there's, there's 25 open right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, burger sauce. Uh, controversial. I like a chili. Uh, I like a chili sauce. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, deep fried pizza only in Scotland. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah, I can't believe the Americans have never embraced it. That's the meme, isn't it? They deep fried deep frying in Scotland. So. Yeah. Well, did you ever watch um, Lockdown? When when the Grand Tour came yeah. up here and they, they had mm. like deep fried kedgeri for, yeah. for breakfast, yeah, every uh, bit, the peas like, were deep fried. So, so it's like after we'd finished being sick, it was time to hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many was it? How much just like what's what's this? Yeah. What's this? So he's really picky with his food. Yeah. Um, what's the next one? Uh, my Gary says, uh, The Devil All the Time, such an underrated masterpiece of a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I've not heard of that one, I'll take your word for it though. Uh, CJ Broskin said, Just a quick question How do you guys explain women in a fight scene without sounding sexist? This mostly pertains to Bo Katan uh, managing to solo Bobo in Mando, um, or just general scenes that break plot uh, for an easy win for them. Um, Where they asking, How do we do it? Without it being stupid, I, I guess like uh, yeah. How can how can you make it work? I suppose. Well, superpowers is one that always mm-hmm. gets you in there. So, um, yeah. sci-fi fantasy, you'd be easy to find it for that. Skill will take you to a particular, you know, like you you take a Homer Simpson type character and you put them against a um, like like a Lectra. You know, yeah. you, you can mm-hmm. definitely you have to build the fight choreo- choreography Wonder wise. Wonder Rousey or someone. You gotta have them uh, use the weight of their opponent against them and out them. Go. Then you have it's people like Gina Carano, Gina Carano, who can just I'd love to. Like, yeah, she can just punch you in the face, and that will be believable enough, especially if it's your uh, like average built dude. We have so yeah. many examples of them doing it right. We just have mm. infinite examples of them doing it wrong. I mean, I, I was thinking back to you know characters like Sarah Connor, who. In Terminator 2, she has to take on men on a couple of occasions, and she usually has a weapon of some kind to yeah. hand. Like, she has a nightstick she uses to break a guy's arm. Um, but then she she can also be taken down quite easily because she's small and light. And yeah. so the, the movie's fairly realistic about what her restrictions would be. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, like, you're, you're probably just going to have to, one, account for the fact that they are smaller and weaker and try and compensate for that usually they can use their environment to their advantage or like Mahler said they, they would have more skill they're more tactical or, or whatever about it um and try and do it that way but just to have it be an out and out slugging match uh not gonna work it's just ridiculous that's actually one of the <clears throat> first things they establish in my name is that she joins this uh like uh fight gangland fight club whatever and um she's uh she's like on a punching bag blah, blah, blah. and the the dude training her like stops her and stuff and and the first thing he says is look you're never going to outpower them you have to out technique them because mm. you're never going to be stronger than them and it, so it established that that you know right from the get go so she, her, her, she was all about her technique when fighting so it's just yeah it's just it's like just refreshing to hear uh you know just commonsensical stuff it's not 
sexist. It's common. It's just commonsensical stuff, and how it would be in a real fight. You, a, a female, wouldn't go toe to toe physically with a man. She get destroyed, just absolutely destroyed. Uh, so they have to. You'd have to out uh, technique them. Should have to be more skillful, more lithe, more agile. I, I think that the problems come in, particularly mm -hmm. you see it in the the Marvel TV shows and stuff, where a woman would be fighting a man. And the moves that she's doing require her to be as strong as him, if not physically stronger, just to shove him back, like mm. block his, his punches or whatever. You can't do that unless you're a match for them in terms of strength. And then you see them do it, and you just think, yeah, that's that's just a stuntman. Like, yeah. absolutely pulling every punch and, like, just working Throwing his ass off to make, to make you look good, yeah. Um, and so it's just... It's not believable. The problems come in, though, when you know, people take this to heart and somehow think that it's real or that, like, this is how fights would play out. And it's like, how how many people are actually going to get their asses kicked because mm -hmm. they think they can actually take on guys twice their size? Like, it's just uh, Good luck. such a bad example to set for people. Um What's the next one? Trenton Quinn said, it was really interesting seeing the difference in reaction to season two uh, between myself and my wife. I read the books and played the games and was done by episode two. Meanwhile, my wife loves it. So that must be referring to The Witcher, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good on her if she loved it. Like, I uh, kind of <laughs> struggled effort. with it. Well, I, I mean, yeah. without trying to be sexist, I think it is kind of made for women. It's written by them. It's written by them. Um, produced there's, a lot by them, yeah. So Runned by them, um, yeah. It's, and it was and kind the of only a... fucking people with any fucking agency are them in the show. So, yeah, I always find it's interesting, like, to see how male characters get written by women because they're, they're 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 yeah. Well, they're quite often portrayed as being like overly emotional and like kind of short-sighted and, and insecure um and and you know so, just kind of so react to things woman. well that wow. that's the i guess that's what i'm driving at is like is it projecting your own experiences <laughs> onto these characters without like really understanding how guys think and like yeah it's, it's just a bit of a weird one uh but it just never rings true like i look at these male characters the way they're written and i'm just like yeah th this these guys are not acting like any man i've ever met in my life no, they're all submissive and, um, yeah, emotionally stunned. Or over, yeah, like I say, they're over emotional. Uh, always like her standing behind the woman. It's it's kind of like a, I think, a feminist dream of how they they would want to control a man. Not necessarily how a man would be, just how they would control a man. Yeah, yeah. Um. Stephen Bobo says, Happy New Year, Drinker. Congratulations on your 1 million subs. Thank you. Uh, this Very question for you and maybe as, what are you looking forward to in the, the Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2? Ooh. Good question. Do you want to go first? Because you played this recently. Well, I'd like to get more than 10% of the game in it, which is kind of what we got with the first one. Um, the... the it feels like it's all to play for now because they've gone through this weird alternate timeline thing where, mm -hmm. where everything has been like wiped clean and anything could happen. Um, so, yeah, like I'm excited to see where they take it. I love what they've done with all the different characters. Um, I hope they keep Kate Sith out of it because fucking who wants a magical Moogle thing running about? Um, you know, I, I've... In it. I've got this weird sneaking suspicion that you didn't see Kate Sith. Kate Sith was in it. Yeah, but not like the whole thing of him. Just like no. his, just the cat thing. Yeah, and I think he won't. Yeah, yeah. I think he won't be a playable character. I think he's just going to like show up for a few story events and then fuck off, which is fine by me because he's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I think what they're going to do is Aerith doesn't die the way she did in the original game because Sephiroth doesn't want to kill her. I think the player is going to have to make the choice to kill her in the finale to, to end up defeating him. I think the, that's what they're going to do. The plan in the original Final Fantasy VII was to bring Aerith back. But they 
just like ran out of time and you know too many things were going on so they it, she remained dead i would like the open world element to come into the game yes i would like the golden saucer to to be in i'd like a, a nice trip to the golden saucer um i i i am really intrigued because i i'm quite happy for this to be completely different to the the og this is a remake you know, this isn't a remaster. This isn't. Uh, this is a remake. So, th it's to me, this is like Battlestar Galactica. You know, it's, it's you got their own ideas for it. Uh, I, I really am interested to see what they do with Zach, um, because uh, that was that was kind of like the shock for me. Uh, was Zach and Cloud lived, uh, which uh, which was great, and then seeing them sort of like pass through each other through the dimensions that they were in that uh, was rather interesting. Now that we know Biggs and Wedge are both alive, um, <clears throat> be a bit unfair if Jesse wasn't. And as Drinker said, uh, there were hints that uh, Jesse is also actually alive as well. Uh, I really liked her as well. <laughs> yeah, th I thought all three of them were, were, were so well written um, comparative to the... the in, the in the OG, they didn't really get fleshed out that much. And in this, they, they really gave them some good particularly jesse jesse got some great stuff with her family and then her death and and uh all you know that was some really really good stuff uh that was just great that whole tower scene was just great uh of biggs and wedge and and and, and jesse um but yeah yeah i just want to see more of that open world element and given us the option to to kind of i wouldn't mind a ruby weapon you know ruby yeah weapon. yeah uh turning up wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be a, a a bad thing either um and yeah looking forward to looking forward to characters like sid coming in uh and um i don't know how far it's going to go because yeah you know the midgar was such a such a sh short period of the game comparative to uh the rest of the game and yet it was the whole of this one um i i uh yeah, I'm just hoping to see Vincent as well. Uh that that could be that could be really cool getting Vincent in with the crew and and uh Oh, I love Tifa with all my heart. Yeah. She's um the the I'll say this, they do a great job of making both Tifa and Aerith very likable. Um Yes. And they, very they... complete different characters as well yeah like polar opposites um yeah, yeah it's when when they're outside Aerith's house and it's tifa and cloud we, we, i was just screaming hug her hold her yeah to the screen and then when he does it was just like oh see i didn't get that scene i got Aerith in that one ah okay when you jump down into the sewer and uh you, the the girls are knocked out yeah. You have the option to go to Tifa first or to Aerith. Yeah. So did you go to Aerith first? Aerith's always going to be my girl. Sorry, That's man. That's great. That means Tifa's all mine. Yeah, you can have her. And like I say, as much as she is, she's very likable. Uh, and this this is one of the things that weirdly jumped out at me. Like, oh my God, like a, a modern video game where the, the females are just like nice people. Mm. And they're not like total assholes and trying to like assert their authority over everyone around them. It's like they're just they're just cool people, you know, um, yeah, and um, quite feminine. It's it's really oh, very unusual. Feminine, yeah, uh, the the voice actress uh, actress for Aerith has a uh, YouTube channel, hmm. uh, which I uh, I am subscribed to, and she just she does uh, playthroughs of games and stuff, and she's just like like adorable. Yeah, like, was, like very pretty, but just like as a person, she's just absolutely adorable. So that must uh, be weird yeah. for her, like playing her own game essentially. Yeah, she played it. Yeah, she played Final Fantasy well, VII uh, Remake as well. And um, voice actor for Abby played Last of Us too, if you guys remember. Oh no! And, uh, there's that clip where someone asks her whose side she's on, and she says, "Everyone's stupid in this game." <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> um yeah I, I i i know somebody who knows her 
uh, and they say that uh, she's she's a lovely person. In re- you know the 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 voice actress is a lovely person. Um, but yeah, I I very much agree with you. The open world thing is what was really missing from the first part of the remake. Like mm. there was never a point where the game just opens up and breathes a little bit and lets you just yeah. explore. Um, it's all very constrained, and it's it pissed me off because I was like, I just want some time to just explore this world and look around, and you never really get it. Hmm. Um, but I mean, it had some great set pieces. That's a wonderful. I love the grave, the graveyard, whole of the graveyard stuff. I thought was was the train graveyard. I should say was uh, was so good. I thought. Yeah. No, I I very much agree. Um. I'll probably just do a couple more and then I finish up there. I think um, Xander Dawson said, um, "Not giving Netflix any views for Witcher, but I'm glad Henry Cavill is getting that bag. Uh, Got to fund that 40k mm. Custodius Army somehow." <laughs> there's uh, there's a tweet doing the rounds where it's like Henry Cavill's making a million dollars per episode of The Witcher, uh, and it's like at this rate, by sometime next year, he'll have enough for a three thousand point Warhammer 40k yeah. Army. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't he got? Didn't he get like uh, his castmates to start painting Warhammer figures as well on set? That's what I hear. I fucking hope so, man. Honestly, <laughs> so it's something yeah. to do when they're in, you know, the downtime. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be so funny. You know, if Henry Cavill asked me to paint some Warhammer figures, I'll absolutely do it for him. Um, Henry, right yeah. here, right here, dude. <laughs> Um, Dr. Vapor said, Hail as Mauler and Drinker, the greatest of all time. I'm off to work today and could finally watch live for the first time. Love you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Aww. mate. Um, Alden the Blue, does it seem that quite a few of these feminist fatal writers uh, stuff their stories with mundane crap? Uh, yes, it does. Um, Chris McAvoy says, we need more shows made for men or women like in the past. Something for everyone uh, dilutes it into crap. It's an interesting point now, actually, because it used to be you would get movies that were very much for men, like the ones that we've talked about previously, like your your big 80s action flicks and stuff like that. But then there was movies designed to appeal to women. Um, now it feels like you're, you're kind of got this weird generic sludge that's just trying to appeal to everyone and doesn't really make anyone happy. Um, I, I feel like this is something you could do with the TV shows, particularly on, on say Marvel, you know, have some one that's like very female centric, like one division. And then something like Hawkeye should just be like an all action diehard type thing for men. <clears throat> should. Uh, why, why can't you do that? It's weird. Cause women maximum audience potential, but then nobody loves it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I'd, I, they're almost like, yeah, I'd rather everyone was just meh on it than than some people loved it and some people hated it. Um, Tobias Gregory said, The Witcher Season 2 is a massive step backwards, as you said. Uh, Dara, the diversity checkbox elf, gets uh, almost as much dialogue and screen time as Geralt. Great video. Keep up the fight. Thank you. Uh, Luis Roberto Rubio gave me 500 Mexican dollars. Dollars. Hmm. MXN? It must yeah, be Mexican, Mexican, yeah. Mexican dollars, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, Ransom G says, High Top made a great point in his Endgame vid about how when Whedon did his jokes, he'd never stop the movie for one, uh, meaning not stopping the tone of the scene uh, for a joke. Which um, I think is probably true. Like, Whedon was quite good at weaving humour into things generally. A lot of people pointed out, like, it's, uh, people. some people say, like, oh, Whedon humour, but it's like, well, when it's done by people who aren't Whedon, <laughs> it, can, it can get pretty cringe, yeah. Unfortunately, just like oh, all my characters are witty, but if you're not witty, and translate well, it also yeah. how it really does <clears throat> factor differently depending on who's saying the comedy. Yeah, how good the actor is, how they do it. Um, otherwise, it just it can come across so flat and boring and and just unfunny. But you know, we've gonna... got Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, just like natural, like comedy, charisma, like mm. yeah. Compare him to Brie Larson for a second. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, she she's got better tits. Uh, yeah, uh, she's got. Maybe she's, she, he's got better feet though. So oh hell yeah. Uh, I'm going to end on a Bigfoot. 
Okay, I'm going to end on a high note here. For Taker six ten says, Aquafina reminded me of Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> 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 What's Bird that? Yeah. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Fucking hell. I, I can't it's, even approximate her voice. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the Rothmans, man. It's the Rothmans. I can't go deep enough. Aquafina. Yeah. Oh, wasn't no. she a joy? No. Oh, yeah. Really elevated <laughs> Shang-Chi. Like. Oh, God, that film. I hated that film. Um... Yeah. It was trash, but you know it was a triumph uh, at the same time sure. as yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an absolute triumph. Yeah, that uh, may or may not have actually made a profit. It never made a fucking profit. There's no way. I'm sure it will ultimately on Disney Plus and all that other stuff, but like no way. It like at cinemas did that movie turn a profit. Um. <sighs> Yeah, that's all I can say. Well, I, I, I think it's it's probably a good time to end it because there's no way I'm going to get through all these super chats, and we've been going for we've been going for a few hours now, um, and so I want to say thank you to all the people in chat for all these these generous super chats that you've sent through. Um, as always, the ones that I didn't get through tonight, I'll do a catch up stream over the weekend. Um, maybe more will be there. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get all of them covered either way. Um, and I want to say thank you to my my lovely guest and my my lovely co-host for being on tonight, Mauer. As it's been a pleasure as always, gentlemen. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for having me. Again. Always fun to be here. Yeah, that was a really um, quick three hours. I gotta say, yeah, it blasted through. Yeah. Well, when you when you get into this, it uh, makes it easier. Um, but yeah, like. Uh, I was going to say that the links to both of their channels, as always, are in the description. So if you haven't subscribed to them, then please do so. Please um, do. Yeah, I would. I would give like her, give her a look. Did. Give us a subscribe, especially. He's been yeah. doing great work. Well, I'm trying to get to three hundred thousand, and I'm on two nine two. Oh, oh, come on. We've got to get us up to 300. Come on, do it. Do it. There's like four, do it now. Do it, do it now. Yeah, come on. Do it now. Do it now. He's here. <laughs> Subscribe to him. He's here. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> I'm here. Come get me. Come on. I'm here. <laughs> what on are you that waiting for? On that fantastic note, that is all I've got for today. So go away now. <laughs> <laughs>